I'm not going to ask for fine details on that. <laughs> no, I'm not either. So I'm just going to go with it. One, two, three, go. Hello, everyone. I am Zazubar, and welcome to another episode of the Sons of Sarazawa podcast. Tonight is going to be a special episode, but not a special episode in one of those kind of like uh, Power Rangers ways where like they have two different Power Rangers teams that team up and there's m- more of a cast. It's not going to be a special episode in like the Captain Planet way where we talk to you about AIDS and shit. No, well, that might happen, but we'll see. It's not likely, but it might happen. Instead, it's more like a character piece where you get focused on specific individuals. That is a great, great analogy. This is like the opening of Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes, the cartoon, where it's like ten minutes each, and it's just on one character. Because, ladies and gentlemen, as you can probably already tell, it is just three of the five Sons of Sarazawa tonight. The astute, Joining me, the astute among you may have noticed that Adam and Gorazard have not said anything. <laughs> <laughs> Not that, now, not that Gorzard ever does, anyway. <laughs> yeah, so you might not have noticed Gorzard, but you probably noticed Adam, since he usually would have taken the opportunity to make a joke by now. So uh, you you probably noticed that there, at least Adam's not here. But Gorzard, you're still wondering. But I, I will affirm it for you so you don't continue to wonder that Gorzard is not here. But who is here? That's a great question. And uh, if, you, if you're good at math and good at looking at the title card on the screen, you probably figured it out. For those of you who aren't, I will introduce them for you. I have Dylan McCandless. For the moment. <laughs> for the moment. We'll get to that in a minute. And the magnificent Andres Perez. Hey, everybody. This is Andres Perez, and this is the Sons of Sarazawa podcast. Yay! Yay! Woohoo. <laughs> Dylan, of course, a beacon of energy as always. However, he might not be tonight. Because Dylan is having internet problems. I am having internet problems. Right now it seems to have returned to normal. But if I drop from the call at any point in this episode, you, that's the reason. Yeah, we were actually kind of uh, – well, let's, let's give them the full story. So we started we, – we got on the phone late tonight because I had to go to CVS after getting out of work to go get my dad NyQuil because he's sick. Hey, man, hey man what's with all this wee stuff? I've been with Dylan since like – a couple hours ago. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, well, we, we, I, were already, I, we were already yeah. talking on the phone when my internet crapped out the first time. Oh, really? Okay, so what time did you guys get on the phone? Uh, let's see. Gotta be like two hours ago, perhaps? Holy shit, you guys can talk. <laughs> Seven or eight something, maybe? Yeah. Oh, holy shit, I was still at work. <laughs> I got I got, I got out, uh, let's see. Well, that, that, was seven, that, that was seven or eight my time, Bill, so that would be an hour uh, later. Your time. Oh, okay. All right. Well, even still. Okay. Okay. We we got on the phone at eight oh nine my time. All right. Okay. So that's that's a lot. That's a lot less than what I thought. I was like, have you guys been on the phone since like last night? <laughs> yes. Power conversation. <laughs> you guys did it for charity and shit. It was a telephone. <laughs> <laughs> But with no audience, so you guys were just talking out of your ass. There was entertainment, but nobody could see them. <laughs> no one donated. No one donated anything. It was just for your own charity. Exactly. It was, it was all for us. Indeed. Um, but Dylan, is there any uh, particular reason that you theorize may be causing this problem? I I have double checked everything in my house, and everything seems to be connected. My my theory is that my service provider may have been experiencing some issues. Who is your service pro- provider so we can send them death threats in email form? <laughs> My local phone works. company. Because <laughs> that always works. My local fucking phone company, so I don't know if somebody hit a pole or what. <laughs> <laughs> I, I keep telling you guys, it's the government. They're on to us. They the know. Fucking government. They know that we have something that they do that Warner Brothers does not want us to have. Yes, because the government like works for Warner Brothers, and Warner Brothers technically owns America. <laughs> of course, they own Batman. Right, and because they own Batman, they own America. Because America. you're Batman. <laughs> because Batman equals America. How funny how we I it will in, not. Uh, I will not argue with that statement. No, not really, especially in our modern day yeah, kind of pop sad, cultural. Yeah, it kind of sad how we've become more cynical as a society to the to the point where we relate more to Batman than the Man of Steel who represent, supposedly represents truth, justice, and the American way. Though to be fair, Superman is an alien. 
At this point, we might. Have, and <laughs> he renounced. Illegal aliens did took her germs. And, <laughs> and he renounced. That is a joke from off recording. <laughs> and he renounced. It's actually a joke from South Park that we brought on off recording. But um, oh. not, not to mention that Superman also rejected his U.S. citizenship. So. Well, that, that was is that, true. That, that wasn't Which canon, though. Who cares? So. <laughs> You know that who doesn't? True. You know who doesn't care? America. <laughs> that is true. There, America, that is true. America, ignorant as fuck, and loving yeah. it. <laughs> and loving it. And it's not surprising that we stole something from McDonald's or some of America. Anyway, at this point, we might as so, well rename our country Gotham or Batmanica or something. Well, uh, I don't know. Batmanic. <laughs> that sounds like Bat-manica. that sounds like the Jap- that sounds like the Japanese version of Batman. <laughs> Batmanica, go! I must go stop the Joker. He does not guess the city. All <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna fight. Use a giant bat shaped robot, giant robot, to fight off the Joker's mutant giant Creek kaiju's. Hey, that's how we fought. Yeah, like, that's how we fought. Like, it's Japanese Spider-Man, but with Batman in it. Hey, that's how we fought. Yes. That's how we fought Bane in the Batman. He has a giant. <laughs> oh yeah, he does have a giant. Oh yeah, he did do that. And in an episode of Batman: The Brave and the Bold, he has a bat bot voiced by Adam West. Yep, that's true. But it's Brave and the Bold, so you expect shit like that. Well, also remember, in, um, it's weird because Batman: Brave and the Bold, Adam West played a lot of different roles. He was also um. Thomas Wayne in the episode that Paul Dini wrote. Mm-hmm. That is a that is a surprisingly good show. Like it's not just fun, but it's also it's also a good it's it, it's legitimately good Batman even if it's not dark. I yeah. mean, there's some really good stuff in there. It was uh, it was pretty it was a pretty big risk to go in that direction, especially coming off the heels of the Dark Knight. Oops. Yeah. Well, I think the reason why they well they all they were also kind of backed into a corner with it because because of the Dark Knight they weren't allowed to use any of Batman's normal villains in the first season. Mm-hmm. So that's why they ultimately decided to go specifically for Brave and the Bull because they could use other supervillains. Um, well, even oh, then they, could, they even then they could have just done what Beware the Batman's doing now and use like obscure villains. Um, I think it's just we've had dark Batman for so long now that people were ready for an ode to '60s campy Batman that wasn't Batman and Robin. <laughs> yes, that's true, but not in animation because the Batman tried really hard in the first season to be really dark and it failed miserably at it. I just yeah. it was yeah. the funny thing with with the Batman is like I was I remember watching it as a kid uh when it was on Kids WB and I remember I remember, I remember thinking it to myself thinking to myself why are they making another Batman show? What was wrong with the first one? Like Oh, it's yeah. Yeah, back then I I wasn't aware of the fact that these sort of things tend to happen where one show ends and so another show is made in its place. Yeah, yeah because, well, you know what? Because in that in that argument, people in the '90s could have said, "Why are they making TAS? What was wrong with the Super Friends?" <laughs> <laughs> Actually, right or the yeah or the filmation Batman show where Batmite was a main character. Yes. The funny thing was, I actually grew up with those thanks to like thanks to like Cartoon Network. Oh yeah, Boomerang. I hit. Did that you guys show. have the challenge of the Super Friends VHS? No, unfortunately no. not. I never, I never no? watched any episodes of the Super Friends. Oh my god! When I was um. This is around the first the, uh, the time the first Spider-Man came out. I uh, I bought a bunch of DC and Marvel superhero VHS tapes because we were going on a big road trip to Kentucky. Yeah, that's a big road trip by my family standards, and we which it's like a twelve hour drive, so it's really not that big. Um, so we're driving there, and we we borrowed a portable uh TV with a in, with a built-in VHS player from a de- one of my dad's friends. I remember those good old days. Yeah, where we didn't have, like, DVD players and cars, and we didn't have iPods and shit. We just had... Oh, God, I, I feel the need to maybe be educational. Uh, those those youngsters of, among our audience. A VHS. <laughs> <laughs> a VHS is a is sort of... A, is a sort, it's, it's a video playing device. Um, device is perhaps an overstatement. It's basically a black box with film in it. It's like, and it's, it's like I don't think tape. they even know what film is because everything's shot digitally nowadays. It's like a it's like a tape yeah. for film. Now a tape, what that is? Um, 
We just keep having to describe, like, the different words that, like, because all they know now is, like, acronyms you use in fucking text messages. I feel like I need to explain what a phone is because kids now think, you ask them, what's a, t- what's a phone? It's like a computer in your hand. It's like, no, that's not what that means. <laughs> Back in my day, our phones were connected to the wall. And it's now, fantastic. We're... Now, here's the funny thing. We're all relatively close to the same age. Yeah. We just got out of high school. <laughs> I mean, mm-hmm. so this is funny. Um, yeah, but, we, but, but we're 90s kids, man. We remember this shit. That's Hell true. yeah. Well, I, was, well, I was more late 90s, early 2000s kid, and yeah, I remember VHS and all that. I remember, um, mm-hmm. well, the tapes I got for this trip, I had, I, I had the first Spider-Man, but I had watched it so often I kind of got bored of it. So I wanted to get other superhero stuff, so I got... Um, the volume two VHS tape of Batman TAS, which is the one with, um, oh my God, I remember this so well. It's the one, the Underdwellers, Mm -hmm. the one with the hobos, the one where Batman supposedly dies. And, uh, you know, know, it's not, you know, you know what I had on VHS bill? You know what I had? What'd you have? Scooby-Doo meets Batman. (laughs) I had that too, man. I had that too. Um, but I, I didn't have, I, you know, I think I got it around the same time, but it was, I didn't take it on this road trip with me. I also had X-Men, X-Men Evolution, which is a show that doesn't hold up well. Um, I really want does to it look not, back. Does it I, not? I, because I, I have, I have fond memories of it, but I doubt it holds up. It, it was same here. good. It was good as a kid. And Wolverine is still awesome. But making the X-Men real teenagers is so cliched. Hmm. It's really not that good. Hmm. Um, hmm. I'll take your word. I, uh, it's been years. Hmm, yeah, I mean, I saw it fairly recently. So. Funny how X-Men Evolution is one of those shows that's, like, there are some shows that are always brought back, like, hey, remember that show? But for X-Men Evolution, like, no one talks about it. Like, X-Men the animated series? Uh, yeah. Wolverine and the X-Men? Yeah. X-Men Evolution? Really? I never hear anyone talk about Wolverine and the X-Men. How long, is that even still on? No, it, it got canceled no. after one season. Even though it was an, a de- it was a decent show, it had a whole I, season. Yeah, <laughs> it was it was the, the, it was all about preventing the uh, the what the, the it was all about preventing the Days of Future Past uh, store um, future from happening. Here's the thing: I'll it's just, so hard. To do, it's so hard to do Wolverine properly in a cartoon. Oh, because uh, you just get frustrated because he just punches people and then claws apart their guns. That's the same. And yeah, if you're lucky, maybe he'll fight a robot and he can show what he's really got. That's the same problem that's going on with Beware the Batman because you have he has a sidekick named Katana who uses a katana and and never uses it unless it's to swipe a gun out of a guy's hand or slice is, a gun. She just she just has one because then the toy has one and kids like toys with swords. Um, is Batman cool with killing people in that show? No. He, then like, why does Alfred use guns? Uh, we never actually see him use guns. It's just that his back he has shares kind of like that similar bat background to that one comic. I, what was it called? Batman Earth One or Earth Two? Where it's Earth like one. yeah, Earth One, where he he's like this um, British spy person. He used to be like a oh, he wasn't a spy in that version. He was actually a military person, a military guy who served with Thomas Wayne. Yeah. But in it was, Batman T.A.S., he was, the, it was, was a spy. It was okay, the, well, the, yeah, in, the original, in the original mm-hmm. universe, he was a spy, wasn't he? Right, yeah. In, in, in Earth-1, he's, a, he's just a, a straight-up military guy. Well, basically, for, uh, for, for Alfred in, the, in Beware the Batman, he's basically, he used to be James Bond out there kicking That's ass. That's awesome. He, yeah, he's out there kicking ass. He's very, like, rough and gruff. Oi, my name's, uh, my name's Alfred. I just, That's cool. I just picture either Michael Caine or the the cartoon version of Alfred from TAS doing the gun barrel sequence. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Michael Caine almost played James Bond in Goldeneye, which is fucking weird because he was already old. <laughs> That's how desperate they were to recast Bond because Timothy Dalton left like really, really close to them getting ready to shoot Goldeneye. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And he left because he was like, fuck this shit. And uh, they had to get a new guy to play him. So they went to people like Michael Caine. Um, Sean Bean was originally considered for Bond, but he ended up getting cast as um, Alec Trevelyan. Um, who else was considered? Uh, 
I think Mel Gibson was even considered that we're going to make Bond American. I don't blame anybody from le- for leaving the Bond series after just a few films because I mean, l- look look what happened to the, the to the two guys who had the role the longest. Uh, Sean Connery wound up being in Diamonds Are Forever, which is never a good thing, and Roger Moore had a sex scene with Mayday. Um, yeah, that's a thing. Um, I mean, it's it's weird because the the Bonds with the shorter runs tend to be the ones I like more. Like, Timothy Dalton is my favorite James Bond, and um, I also really like George Lazenby. Yeah. Um, but in terms of, like, the Bonds that had longer runs, I mean, Connery is still, like, the bar, but I don't know. I can't honestly say that if I had to have Timothy Dalton as Bond or Connery as Bond... I can't say that I I that I'd pick Connery over Dalton. I like Dalton's portrayal so much. It's so fucking good. Cuz it's like and I don't know if you, I don't know how big uh, Andre, are you a big Bond guy or is it just me and Dylan here talking out of our asses? I, I believe it's the second option. I'm very sorry, oh. but I've never had <laughs> I'm sorry I've never had the opportunity to get into the James Bond franchise. I mean, I do have memories of wa- uh, watching uh what's it called? Die Another Day. In back when I was a kid, oh, I watched such a great standard that you have there, Andre. <laughs> <laughs> and just Andre, have you be, be, seen Casino Royale? Uh, let's see. I may have. I never watched any of the uh, what's he called? The uh, what's the guy who's doing Bond now? Uh, uh, Craig yeah. Daniel Craig. Yeah, yeah I, I've never. I, I've seen. I haven't seen any of the movies all the way through yet. Andre, do yourself a favor. Uh huh. Go to your local DVD store. Watch we, wait, we, wait, wait, we still have and, those? Because <laughs> nowadays it's all, tar- it's all Target and Walmart now. Go to Amazon. Um. Yeah, and buy, and buy Casino Royale for $9, and uh-huh. I guarantee you'll be a Bond fan in the week. <laughs> okay. It is one of the best movies I've ever made, I think. I guess the, I've, I've always, you know, like, with, I've always had this idea of, of James Bond being like that. That that suave, all over the top action sort of thing, which is it. not what he is in Casino Royale. I know. I, I, that's why I, I stayed away from the Daniel Craig stuff because it didn't seem like the one that most people are familiar with. You shaking, not scared. Well, of. here's the thing with with the Daniel Craig bonds. That's that's what that's the problem a lot of people have with it. Mm-hmm. Who um that it's too gritty. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing. They do put some over-the-top stuff in there. They just do it in a gritty way. Like, in Skyfall, the Aston Martin's in there. Spoilers. Um, the fucking, uh... I mean, there are some over-the-top scenes in Skyfall, but they do it in a way where it's able to be taken seriously, where it can still kind of say something. Mm-hmm. Um, see, the reason I say Casino Royale is, like, one of the best, and I can... There's very few people on the planet who are going to agree with me, but I do think it's at least one of my favorite movies of all time, because... It does, it does so many different things so well. It's a really good action movie. It's a really good drama, really good espionage, mm-hmm. and it's a really good character film. Oh yeah, I mean, Daniel I mean, Craig, you know, the, acts his ass off. The thing that Bond is famous for is these big, like, golden eye, like, action scenes and all the like, all the women and all that stuff. But in Casino Royale, what I enjoy the most is the scene where they're playing poker. <laughs> yep. Oh, that's the best scene in the movie. Best scene in the movie. I mean, the dialogue is awesome. I mean, the scene with Vespa and and James on the train, where they're talking, where they it's kind of a play on the whole um, innuendo stuff you get with Bond girls, but it's done in a way where it kind of seems more natural. Mm-hmm. And it also serves to develop Bond's character mm-hmm. because it's the first time in a movie since Goldeneye that anyone's mentioned that he's an orphan. Mm-hmm. So it's it, as a Bond fan, it was just cool to see that. Um, but uh-huh. we're, uh, oh, we're oh. alienated. I, I I just want I know like was was I remember I clearly remember seeing uh, remember watching in like an old school Bond film as a kid on like I think it was like Turner Classic Movies where that featured an, an Asian Bond girl. Maybe I uh, want I want to say it was Thunderball perhaps because I do also no, remember no, it was probably you're, it, was it Connery? You're, you're thinking you only live twice probably. Yeah, I was. I'm going to say with 100% sure, certainty that it was the only live okay. twice. And it I, was either that or the man with the golden gun. Was he, and in, I do, uh, was he in Japan, and did he have the best Bond villain ever? I can't remember the villain, but I definitely remember the Jap- the uh, the Japanese setting. And I do remember okay, it was definitely you only live twice. Because man I do the remember is in uh, China, mm-hmm. is it? China? No, I think it's Taiwan, if I, don't, if I remember correctly. Taiwan. And let's see, I do also have memories of watching a Bond film on TV. 
where there was a fight scene underwater where they're all with scuba suits shooting for tarpons that one at each other. That's, that's Thunderball. Okay, that's so Thunderball. I did watch Thunderball. I remember there was a movie which, with thunder in the title. Which, Dylan, I don't know if you'll agree with me. I think that's the most overrated Bond movie ever. I don't hate it. Um... I do. And I, and I think the only problem is that, for me, a Bond movie has to constantly hold your attention. Mm-hmm. For, and for in me, order to do me, that, the thing that, you always got to have tension. For me, the thing that makes Thunderball worth the price of admission is the theme song alone. But uh, oh, okay, yeah, that's that's fair. That's fair. But the but the, it's so boring. Yeah. Because half of the movie is underwater, and they don't use that to because the movie is a lot more important than it is good. Um, because there's a lot of really amazing underwater photography, and the movie you know, I, used I, I it whenever think, it can. I think that's what I enjoyed most about it, was um, marveling at the underwater stuff. Uh, like the fight scene that Andres is just talking about with the harpoons. Very well staged. The problem with it is it, is it moves very slowly. Oh, yeah. It's not exciting. It's boring, because you're just like... It's, it's like watching a, an entire fight scene in slow motion where it has no dramatic effect. It would be like if in Moonraker they had a fight in space, but it was just them in their spacesuits, like, waddling towards each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, I wish Moonraker had a scene like that now. Um, well, here's, here's the thing. Um, you know what pisses me off about Thunderball, aside from the movie kind of being boring, is that people give it a lot of credit for the underwater stuff, but it's borrowing a lot of techniques from another movie that I think is a lot more important. Creature from the Black Lagoon. Mm. That movie, um, Thunderball, has a lot of the same um, cinematographers as Creature from the Black Lagoon. And they use a lot of the same techniques, but Bond was... Um, but the thing with Thunderball is it's a lot more elaborate because you've got a lot, of more, a lot more people underwater at the same time. And also it's in color, and it's a, again, it's a Bond movie, so you've got bigger marketing... And I think a lot of people give it more credit, and it is definitely impressive, and it's definitely an advancement over Creature, Mm -hmm. but Creature is the movie that started it, and I think um, it uses it a lot more to its effect because it's a horror movie, and it's supposed to be a little slower. Just wondering, Um, did I just accidentally stumble into a preview of Bondapalooza? Yes. (laughs) Yes. That is exactly what you stumbled into, uh, Andres. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, but speaking of Bondapalooza, that has once again been pushed back. I apologize, everyone. Um, to 2020. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, you no. Bill, you selfish bastard. Right? I'm so selfish. Um, no, it's it's it, not going to be pushed it, back very it's far. It's always about you, isn't it? Right? I mean, I don't, I never ever think about my fans. Right? You guys, why is okay. it? Why, hey, you guys, Bondapalooza. Bondapalooza is now. He's going to talk about every movie in one episode, um, and it's going to be a Christmas special. <laughs> <laughs> You're not far off, actually. I am pushing Bondapalooza back to start two weeks after this semester of college ends. Mm. Okay, so I want to get two break. weeks ahead. Break. I want to get two weeks ahead of myself. Mm-hmm. And then start. So it's not going to go for an exact month. It's going to go for as long as it takes. And I'm just going to post. It's going to be the same thing as Godzilla Palooza. It's just not going to be as clean of a schedule. It's going to go as long as it needs to go, um, one per day. But it's going to start as soon as I feel like I'm comfortably. A, com- Whoa! What the fuck? Comfort- comfortably. Comfortably. <laughs> <laughs> comfortably ahead, and I can start to post them without worrying about having to put one up and then blah, blah, and then recording one, put one up. Cause that's what Godzilla Palooza turned into. And there were days where I had very little hair on my head, um, doing Godzilla Palooza. Um, but, I, but have, uh, anyway. I have a feeling that by the time you're, you finally come out with Bonapalooza, I'm already going to be done with season three of movie reviews with Kaiju Noir. And it took me a year to cover all the season two with all the Godzilla knockoffs. <laughs> Um, yeah, we'll see. Um, but it's, it's going to happen. And after that, I am planning on doing a week of Kong reviews. Uh, because why not? Um, Kongarama, the return. No, it's not, because I can't, (laughs) I'm not going to steal that from Adam. I'm going to do, um, well, I'm just going to, because there's, there's seven King Kong movies. See, one. And so seven days of King Kong. Right. Uh, so that's that's the plan. Anyway, I don't I don't I don't want to turn this into a uh, 
a Zazubar plans out his life video. Zazubar other, updates. Real, real quick before we move on, any other projects you want to announce, Bill? Uh, Something that no. has to do with a certain epidemic, perhaps? What? Something that and, has to do with I, I said something that has to do with a certain epidemic that's spreading the nation, or or I don't know maybe some uh, maybe some uh, stop motion or something. Oh 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 oh, oh yeah, that's happening too. Uh, Asshole rats the stop motion the stop motion musical is, is happening as well. <laughs> of course. Of course. Now, uh, Andres, are you referring to the news broadcast? Yeah. Oh, oh, that's not going public. Yeah, yeah, of course, I know. I was just joking. I was just joking around. <laughs> no one gets that joke, and the audience is totally lost. Thank you, Andres. Hooray, in- <laughs> Hooray for inside jokes. I'm, fi- now, I'm finally uh, a part of one. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, over the week, I had to do a project for TV One in college, and I had to do a fake news report, so I decided to do one on asshole rats. Um, it's on YouTube, but it's unlisted, so... <laughs> on, professor was, it's on YouTube, but you're not going to see it. You're not allowed. All right, <laughs> since you, <laughs> all right fine, Andre. Since you mentioned it, I will post it publicly. It'll go up. Uh, it'll go up right after this episode goes up. Um, Everybody, you, you know, you, you could you could always just edit this audio out and pretend that it never happened. Yeah, but that would require effort, and I'm not really into give, to doing that these days, so no, not going to happen. Um, so yeah, the, you can make your life so much easier for you if you learned how to edit your videos, man. Life would be I do so much ed- easier. No, Andres, do you know what it's like to go through three hours of podcasts and pick out tiny sections that you don't like? It's annoying. I'm yes, just like I know, I know what I, I kind of know what that what that's like. Well, if you combine all my reviews together, it's kind of like an entire day's worth of audio right there. Okay, now I do that every every two weeks. No, but um, okay, everybody, Bill will post his uh, his news report, and um, so everybody check that out, and uh, you can see the boom mic. So. <laughs> oh, oh, fuck you! Fuck you! Damn it, Bill! Now I have to edit that out. You've destroyed the magic. <laughs> the magic, Bill. The magic. The magic of asshole rats. I think that's our episode title, The Magic of Asshole Rats. It better be. I, I imagine that is, that's like the children's movie version of Asshole Rats, where it's like there's like a trailer, and it's like it's like this like whimsical like opening of like a town. It's like, in a town, un, not unlike your own, a magical thing is coming. The magic of asshole rats. Title sequence. <laughs> <laughs> Starring uh, what's that chick's name from uh, Mar- uh Matilda? Uh, oh, Mar- Mar- oh. Mara Wilson. Starring Mara Wilson as all of the asshole rats. <laughs> I wish. I wish she she made she's made a few appearances on that guy with the glasses now, and everybody on the internet freaked out because she had boobs, and she's never done anything else. <laughs> what does she do now? Does she like do real estate or some shit? No, she like lives in New York and like does. Does um, I think it's New York, and she does like I think she does theater, and she oh. does a lot of charity work. Oh, okay, so good for her. No, I'm just kidding. Fuck her. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, in a wild direction, even more wild. Fuck charity. <laughs> well, then, uh, that escalated quickly. Um. <laughs> Give me money away to other people when it should belong to me. <laughs> I, I, I feel owed the money of Mara Wilson because I paid to go see Thomas on the Magical Railroad oh, movie theater. I saw it too. <laughs> I saw it in the theaters as well. <laughs> High five, man. High five, dude. <laughs> um, oh, did you know that there was supposed to be a, a new Thomas movie being made, but only last month it was announced that it was canceled? Oh, I don't care. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, no. What, what was the story with that? Darn it. I, I, it was just it was just announced and then no news came out for like a year after its announcement and then because no one gave a fuck. <laughs> hey no, man, I gave, a, I, I gave one. Okay, but like, Andres, like, are you gonna go see that in like theaters? Hell yeah! <laughs> obviously, what we need is a dark, gritty JJ the Jet Plane movie. Um, 
and a dark gritty Thomas the Tank Engine movie, and then a dark gritty crossover. I yes. you know. I, sh- I showed this to Dylan, where it was a robot chicken sketch of Thomas the Tank Engine, and it was so awesome because they had like Keith David doing the voice of a bank robber, and he's getting in a fight <laughs> with Sir Topham Hatt aboard Thomas the Tank Engine, and like Thomas, he's like ba- his face is getting bashed against all these so- roadblock signs, and he shouts, "What God? What God would give a train a face?" <laughs> That's great. Um, but 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 but. Well, um, do you guys think that like all those? Imagine like an Avengers movie with all those old like children stop motion shows. So you'd have Theodore Tugboat, Thomas the Tank Engine, JJ the Jet Plane, and Barney the Dinosaur. And Barney the Dinosaur. All the, well, no, he was in stop motion. No, oh no, you're right. But I'm thinking now. I'm thinking like. But I guess PBS they're kind of like in the same vein. It's, it's 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 called the PBS Cinematic Universe. Yes. <laughs> and it's it's scored by Alan Silvestri, directed by Joss Whedon. The, <laughs> the villain is uh. Did the, did those shows have villains? I think no. it was probably. Oh, yeah, they they would have some like ass, some asshole trains that would just like <laughs> act as bullies. And that's what they were called, dumb asshole trains. Um. <laughs> Oh my god, Thomas has a Captain America in his universe. He does? Do you guys remember Duke? No. Duke. I'm checking it out right now. I feel right so now. depressed for remembering we this. Need the, uh, we, need the PB, okay. we need the PBS uh, cinematic universe, and then the spinoff show, Agents of PBS. Uh, <laughs> and then instead of, instead of Samuel L. Jackson con- connecting all this, it's the ghost of George Carlin, Mr. Conductor yes! himself. <laughs> Fuck all you cocksuckers. <laughs> Uh, like, you want to talk about children's entertainment? I know children's entertainment. I'm Mr. Conductor, damn it. Now, you know who the villain is? It's a crazed helicopter from J.J. the Jet Plane. <laughs> he's gone nuts, and he's just trying to rape everybody. I and like the only it. One to, and the only one to stop him is Harold the Helicopter from the Thomas show. Yeah, oh my god, they were getting an epic fight. That's his Thor. <laughs> they have a scene just like oh. the one of the Avengers. I'm looking at Duke right now. I I remember him. I have a VHS. He's like the Thomas version of Captain America. Yeah. He was trapped in a shed. Yeah. And he went into like suspended animation or some shit. With the and, and stuff. Yeah. I re- right. Oh my god. He was like like yeah. He was like one of the old school trains before Thomas, Percy, and James showed up. Right. Yeah. And I watched this pose again. <laughs> And he got his old job back, and he became, like, a hero. He is the Thomas the Tank Engine version of Captain America. Wow. As someone, as someone who has never watched remember. Thomas the Tank Engine, I, I, uh, uh. I pity you, too. Now you know how I feel during the Bond segment of this show. Well, 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 there's, there's a difference, Andres. Bond is a crappy <laughs> children's television show. You well, according, according to who you're talking to... <laughs> Like I mentioned, like um, I, like again, like I mentioned before, before God, before Power Rangers, before Godzilla, it was me and Thomas the Tank Engine show. A cold, dark room and a bottle of lube. <laughs> oh my! Oh my! He just, he just reheats playing the scenes where you see the trains going into the tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> Andres is like, this is how I was introduced to sex. <laughs> was Thomas the Tank Engine entering and leaving? A, a tunnel, and he would like rewind, fast forward, rewind, and fast forward, so it would go fast. And it would look like it was like the thrust. No, see what he did is he just he just cut the film together so that it was in a loop. <laughs> and she did and the music was like. <laughs> oh my god, this is so sad. No, but oddly, yeah. a good segue into something I wanted to talk about tonight, boys. What's that? I want to talk about since I, I I've been having experience with this lately. I would like to talk about problems from bowel syndrome. Ah. Oh. No, um, I, I want to talk about nostalgia a little bit because it's, it's something I had came across um, yesterday because I have been searching all over creation for one particular video game from my youth uh-huh. that I want to replay so badly because I have like these great nostalgic memories of it and I want to fucking re-experience Super it. Superman 64? Oh, there. <laughs> <laughs> no, worse, no. Um, <laughs> 
No, I have been looking for the Atari 2600. No, I'm not that old. I have been looking for a PlayStation 2 copy of King, of Peter Jackson's King Kong. Ooh, yeah, I remember oh. renting that game. That was a good fuck. That was a good fucking game. <laughs> that came out in a time where I was not very good at video games other than like Smash Brothers cuz it all it involved was punching people. So with King Kong, mm-hmm. I wasn't able to get far in that game when I rented it, but I bet I, I yeah, I would like to try out try that game out and see, you know, check it out for myself from a from a, like a an experienced gamer's perspective. Oh, oh, I a, must have oh, replayed that thing a million oh, times. Oh, it's a good game. I still have my copy, and I revisit it every now and then because it, it's a very good game. They need to remake it so badly and make it longer because it is such a good fucking game. And there's so much potential there to expand Skull Island. I mean, it's it's a good, it, it holds up well, but I think that there's a lot of room for expansion. It would be amazing if they would like remake it, I, um, or just do it, <clears throat> or just do a straight up King Kong game, kind of like Transformers War for Cybertron, yeah. where it wasn't. Did anything? It was just a straight up Transformers game. Uh, have you? You just, you just, you just do yep. you just do King Kong again. You know, make it open world. You know, you, King King Kong can still cars and fuck hookers and shit. And <laughs> <laughs> it's a modern day King Kong. He has to deal with his agent and shit, <laughs> and he can't climb the Empire State Building because because they won't let him through security. <laughs> the Popo's after him, and it's none other than uh, McKinney Kong. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! Gorosaurus um, is the rival gang member. <laughs> he, is, he knifes fucking Jack Driscoll in, in a dark alley, and Kong takes it as a gang war. It's fur versus scales, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's like a great tagline for a fucking King Kong versus Godzilla remake: furs versus scales. And, and in the game, when you kill, and in the game when you kill Gorosaurus, his jaws hanging open, and like all these suds come out for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> They, they, that's a weird thing they kept up on in the Godzilla franchise. And they kept up doing the whole foaming at the mouth thing when someone got strangled. Mm-hmm. And for years, when I was a kid, I didn't understand why they would do it. Because I'm like, is that really what happens when you get strangled? You foam at the mouth? And then I watched Breaking Bad, and apparently that's what happens. <laughs> because in, in Breaking Bad, um, I'm going to try and do this without spoiling the second season... There is a scene where a character beats the shit out of another character and does it so hard that when he ends up croaking, he starts to foam at the mouth. For Breaking Bad fans out there, I think you know the scene I'm talking about. For those of you who aren't, go watch Breaking Bad. It's amazing. Um, But uh, apparently that's a real thing, so young Bill was an idiot. (laughs) It was at that moment where young Bill realized that that the science of foaming at the mouth was sound. That is the secret origin of Zazibar. <laughs> was he found out that that science was sound? Um, no, but I wanted to ask you guys since King Kong is kind of my sacred cow from my youth that I wanted to reacquire mm-hmm. and play through again and re-experience. Do you guys have any uh, objects or games or whatever from your youth? It doesn't have to be a game, anything uh-huh. that you want to nostalgically reacquire and uh, get yourself re-familiar with, play it again, just for nostalgic value for no other reason. There were two games. But it actually happened already. Where um, there, have you guys ever heard of a video game called War of the Monsters? Yes. Yeah. I remember. Yeah. I rented. I remember a long time ago. I was in elementary school. I was at my. Well, no, it was a blockbuster. Blockbuster. You see, for kids for that in those days, we actually had to walk ten miles to these place establishments. We, <laughs> we didn't get our movies from red vending machines. <laughs> Nor from the internet, is. I didn't even get mine from Blockbuster. I went to the ghetto Blockbuster Hollywood Video. <laughs> oh, I had a Hollywood Video, too. Like, it was a block away. Hollywood Video was the fucking bomb. Yeah, that's where I found that... That's where I first discovered that badass VHS of both Godzilla vs. Violante and Gamera Guardian of the Universe. Really? I, I experienced uh, Guardian through uh, Sci-Fi. They uh, played it on a... Remember they used to do those... Uh, remember Sci-Fi Santa? <laughs> no. You guys don't remember Sci-Fi Santa? No, I was a cartoon. I, I was a, I was a car- Hey man, I was a Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon guy. And, you and- have lost your fucking geek cards <laughs> if you don't know who Sci-Fi Santa is. Sci-Fi Santa was this alien who what? was Sci-Fi Santa, and he every Memorial Day he would host this barbecue with all these monsters and. He, it would be a marathon of monster movies, and he would play movies like The Beast, 
Jaws, all the Jaws movies, uh, Godzilla, and Gamera. And I got to see Gamera the Invincible, and I also got to see Guardian of the Universe, and I fell in love with Guardian. Mm. When I was a kid, Guardian was like one of my favorite movies because it was such a good fucking monster movie, and still is. It's it's a really good movie. Um, and that's it's it's, but, uh, it's my personal favorite, mostly due to nostalgia. I didn't even, even knew the existence of of numbers two and three until like I was in high school. Yeah, I think I think Iris is a better movie, but I would rather pop in Guardian just for nostalgic value. Yeah. Also, that music score. I mean, the one on Iris is amazing as well, but it's just, I don't know, just nostalgic value, okay. really, that I, I'd rather pop in Guardian, but Iris is definitely a, a superior film. Do, do, you mind, um, do you mind if I continue the, the, the story? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm it's sorry. all right, it's all right. Um, so, yeah, I was in um, Blockbuster, and I noticed this striking cover of a giant gorilla fighting a giant Japanese-inspired-looking robot in the middle of a city. I was like, whoa, what is this game? War of the Monsters? And I played it. I couldn't beat it because back, back, that wasn't good at video games back then, like I am actually mm. today. <laughs> and um, yeah, such a good fucking gamer. <laughs> um, so definitely not sucking his own dick. <laughs> and not so, at like all. many not years at all. <laughs> so uh, many years later, I was like, you know what? I want that game now. And so I ended up like, I luckily I found it with the box and the box art at the first GameStop I went to. I bought it and. I loved, I just, like, it's one of my, like, fa personal favorite games. Just, like, being able to, like, play as, you got, like, this Godzilla-inspired guy. You got your King Kong-looking guy. You got Giant Mantis. You got two American robots, a Japanese robot. Oh, oh, and, there's a Kamakuris in the game. Good. I was worried. <laughs> <laughs> got, Thank God. You got a psych. No, I, I think it was, uh -huh. it was a lot more like the Deadly Mantis than Kamakuris. Oh, then, well, basically, then, it was kind of like those... Basic. It was made to be, I guess, um, Praetor was supposed to be a uh, homage to all those 50s giant bug movies like Them, Tarantula, The Deadly Mantis, The Black Scorpion, um, Empire. I think it was called Empire of the Ants. Those are, yeah, those are. and also, sorry, but I just want to mention yeah, this. Yeah. The other really cool thing about the whole thing mm -hmm. was each in the, in the, in the uh, campaign mode, uh -huh. each level had a monster movie poster. Yeah, I love those. Which was fucking awesome. I want those posters. Like, if anyone ever made a reproduction of those posters, yeah. I so I was I so want a sequel. If there was any video game that needs a sequel, I want War of the Monsters. Damn it, a War of the Monsters two. Damn it. Oh my god. <clears throat> and, um, um. Yeah. Uh, like. I, I, uh -huh. I, I, HD remake would be awesome. Well, it is available on PlayStation Network for down under PlayStation Two Classic, so that's pretty good that people are getting that. And how much is it? I don't know. I think most of those games are probably around ten to fifteen dollars, perhaps. And maybe if you look there, maybe you can find King Kong. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna buy it just because I want the disc. Um, oh yeah. Totally. But Andre, so I want to ask you this: uh -huh. Rampage or War of the Monsters? Ooh, now Rampage that goes way back to ki to ele to kindergarten, man. On my I yeah, Rampage was a lot older, but yeah, I played uh, I played on my Nintendo sixty four. Uh, I played Rampage, Rampage 2. I even played Rampage uh, Time Warp on the PlayStation 1. And I uh, recently... Yeah. Yeah. There was a oh, Rampage that came out on PS2, too, wasn't there? I remember. Yeah, that was a remake. Oh, yeah, um, I have I have that. On my, I have that for the Wii, uh, Rampage Total. And then they, then they made a downloadable version for, uh, for PSN. Yeah. Oh, ooh, okay. You know what? As much as I love the, the Rampage franchise, I'm going to have to say from a gameplay perspe perspective... War of the Monsters. Well, you just got to do more with War of the yeah. Monsters. You could actually destroy cities, actually fight in the monsters. Rampage was a lot more like a brawler. Yeah, no, it wasn't a brawler. It was just like who can destroy the most buildings the, the fastest and who can earn. Wait, you didn't just you didn't fight the other monsters. You can punch no, them. Man. That's that, that's the extent. Man. You can only like punch them and damage their health bar by like a tiny bit. The focus was on what? who destroys the buildings first, all the last building first. You know what I'm thinking of? There was another game that was an arcade game. Hopefully, maybe you guys can help me remember what it was. Uh -huh. Where it was a fighting game, and it was giant monsters. You are thinking of... Oh, oh, oh King of the Monsters. Yeah, that was oh, it. Maybe and King, it and there was a Kong, and it was bloody as shit. There's there another was, one. Yeah, there, there, um, King of the Monsters 2, the next... the bi King of the Monsters 2, the next big thing, or King of the Monsters 2, the big thing. Wait, do you guys yeah. do you guys remember a uh, fighting game that was like all dinosaurs and it was called Primal Rage? Yes, I have it on. I had the original PlayStation One with the thick black, car the thick cardboard box. Yes, I, you know I want a Primal Rage too. 
damn it. Uh, it's Mortal Kombat yeah, but, with dinosaurs. Yeah, was it really bloody? Oh, yeah, yeah. It, there it, were fatalities. Like, you know what? That's probably what I'm. That's probably what I'm thinking it's of. Like them he because was just I think, saying, it's it's Mortal Kombat with dinosaurs. I'll will send you an image, damn it. <laughs> no, but if you, was there a giant gorilla in it? Because I remember there, a giant gorilla. There was a gorilla. There was a red one. Oh, so that's what I'm thinking of. Then. Yeah, there was a white one and a brown one. Let's see. I'm, I'm, oh, so oh, so it's like Warly Gargantuas. <laughs> Let's see. Um, yeah, I remember this shit. Okay, oh, I, I have an image. I'm going to send you the link. Okay. I definitely won't put it in the video, though. <laughs> of, of course. course. And I just kicked my table. That's a problem. Um, all right, let's see what we got here. Primal Rage. Let's see if I remember this. Oh, this is definitely it. Definitely Dim it. graphics. Oh, God, I remember that. That was so fuck. That's so long ago. There used um, to be toys and shit. There were toys. Uh, I remember playing it at an arcade. Uh, that's still around, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and, oh, my God, we lost Andreas. Did we really? Yeah. Wonderful. Wow. I expected to lose you first. Wow, that sucks. Oh, oh thanks, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, by the way, all, all you kids in the audience, if you're still confused about what a video store is, go over to SouthParkStudios.com and watch an, and watch an episode from last season, season 16, called A Nightmare on FaceTime. And it's a Halloween episode too, so it's really fitting. Oh my God. Um, but Dylan, while Andres is a, a MIA, uh, what what was your sacred cow uh, nostalgia thing that you would like to reacquire? I'm trying to think. I, I usually, I it, it definitely won't be a movie because I keep up with those pretty well. Um, it could be anything. It doesn't even have to be like a pop culture thing. Hmm. There was some cartoon that was completely CG, and I, and which was a big, reboot? which was a big thing at the time, and I don't remember. Reboot. What was it? Reboot. That might be it. To Google. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Beast Wars, maybe, or... And we have lost Andreas. This is a problem. Oh my god, it is Reboot. Oh, it is, okay. See? I've never even seen that fucking show when I got it. Mm. I don't even know if it was any good. I just remember it, and in recent years I've been wondering if I could revisit it to see if it holds up. <laughs> uh. Hang on, I'm trying to figure out what happened to Andreas. It says he's still online, so I'm assuming he just lost connection unless unless this thing is just taking maybe it's just lagging, I don't know. He's not he's not on Skype anymore. Oh he's not? No. Oh shit. Alright, so we have lost Andres. Anyway, so Fox on the Sarazawa, welcome to another episode of Zcast. No, um, <laughs> No, um, and then there were two. And then there were two indeed. Uh, we'll just keep going. Hopefully he'll come back. Uh, wow, this has been a nightmare. Um, we have lost so many people today. Uh, so reboot is your is your sacred cow from your. I'm gonna say so just because here recently I've been I've been thinking about it and wanting to uh, re look it back up and see if it holds up. I doubt it does. <laughs> Um, I've heard good things about it, so I don't know. Um, but, uh, I don't know. It's Canadian, so there's that. <laughs> that means it has to be good, right? Uh, there was another, uh, see, that's a little different, though, but that's, you can say that, that's fine. Um, in terms of, like, shows that you remember seeing parts of, but you don't, or shows or movies that you don't remember the title of, but you remember gl uh, glimpses of them from your youth, there was a, uh... God, I can't believe you mentioned this because I thought of this today when I was brushing my teeth this morning. There was a uh, PSA video from when I was in first grade that I saw. Um, my first grade, uh, or my, my elementary school, was uh, split up into two separate schools. There was Cherry Lane Elementary School, which was for... Uh, classes kindergarten to second grade, and then there was a uh, regular elementary school, which was, which was called Rushmore uh, Elementary School, which was for third to sixth. So it was split up into threes. Um, and then obviously you had the middle school and the high school, which because we're in a small town, was the same building. Um, so that was seven to twelve. 
but he, but uh, the thing was that in Sherry Lane, when you were a kid, uh, they would do a bunch of these like sessions where a group would come in, maybe uh, uh, a animal conservation group or a, ch- a pro like uh, race group or something. It was weird, and they would come in and they would do like a little party. And they would also show you some kind of video that would be like a PSA for whatever they were promoting. And the one I remember, the two I remember the most vividly was one that this guy came in and talked about whales for like two hours. And he showed this video all about this whale that, and oh my god, this is so long ago, I'll really reach it back here. He showed this video about this whale that had been, uh, it must have been an orca, but I don't remember it being an orca. But it had to be, because that's like the only whale that's in captivity. Um, because we don't keep humpbacks and shit in aquariums, right? I don't think so. Um, uh, Andres is on Facebook. He says his Skype crashed and he's trying to sign back in. Okay, all right. And, and so whenever he get, whenever he's back, we'll, we'll let him and in. look who just um, popped back online. <laughs> uh, he should be able to join automatically. Uh, but if he can't, I'll just add him. Uh, but so must have been an orca. But uh, where I'm going with this is. Uh, there was this this dentist uh, school that came in one day, and they were teaching us about brushing your teeth because you know, kid, you know, you don't want to fucking brush your teeth. Um, it's it takes work and shit, and it's healthy, so that means you don't want to do it. Um, exactly, exactly. So, the, how do you get kids' attentions back then? Through cartoons. So they bring in this fucking cartoon PSA. Where it's like this rabbit, this psychotic rabbit with like dentist equipment on, who miniaturizes these teenagers to go into this guy's mouth and fight germs. I shit you not, this was a thing. Somebody greenlight this movie. (laughs) (laughs) Well, if they're making a Captain Planet movie, why not this, right? Whatever this is called. What, that's that's what I'm trying to think of. I don't remember what it was called, or even, if it even still exists. Um, and I remember, I remember, I remember one of the major points that they made in song, in song, mind you, was that you were supposed to brush your teeth twice every day. I remember the beat too. Twice every day. I don't know why I remember this so vividly, but I remember raising my hand. And going, I never brush my teeth. That's a good thing, right? What? And the person looked at me, and I think they yelled at me. It was weird. Um, I wonder. And, I wonder why. That was the dumbest question I've ever. Heard. <laughs> <laughs> this was young Bill. He was kind of an idiot. Um, oh yes, we're, we're, I know. <laughs> fuck you. Um, <laughs> You took me. I remember that we were talking one time, and you you described to me in vivid detail how dumb you were. <laughs> yeah, young Bill was kind of a dumbass, and young Bill decides to ask this question, and I remember getting yelled at, and then the video w- went off on this song, and one of the characters in the video asked, "Is just brushing on school days okay?" And the rabbit repeated the line twice every day, and I don't know why, Dylan. But these moments in my youth were ingrained into my memory for the rest of my fucking life. Because every time I brush my teeth, I think of that fucking song. Every fucking time. So, so Bill, look, looking at this as a reviewer, would you say that this little uh, crappy cartoon was uh, was uh, uh, successful? <laughs> I I think it was, because... You know, at the time, you know, as kids, we always made fun of this shit. Just like, oh, that was so fucking stupid. But the intention worked. And we used those exact it's, words. Yep, it fucking worked. I I don't br- I don't brush twice every day because I think it's unnecessary. But I brush at least once every day. And the line that more stuck with me was, "Is just school days okay?" So I would brush every single day. <laughs> because I didn't want to be just do on school days because that's like what everyone else did. And it worked. This stupid PSA actually succeeded 
in what it set out to do, and I have never had that in my life since then. Yeah, it's yeah. always been you would watch a PSA and make fun of it, and it didn't have any any impact on you. This one did, and it was one with a cartoon rabbit fighting germs. That impresses me that, that a PSA worked, because I've never experienced a PSA that worked. <laughs> really? Not that I can think of. Is there any that you remember vividly from being from when you were a kid? Except though? for maybe Reefer Madness. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I don't know if I have any like PSAs that just like stick out in my memory. None that like none that like horrified you. Not that you like listened to them, but none that like horrified you and were like, "Oh my god, why the fuck would they show that?" Um. I don't know, man. I'm drawing blanks here. <laughs> Really? Oh fuck! Fuck you, Dylan. You're a terrible, terrible podcaster. No. Um. um <laughs> and then Dylan just starts crying. Uh, but anyway, so Andres is still not here, which is a problem because I want to do something. Yeah, he, he came uh, on for like a split second and then he left. So now we have to find a way to entertain the viewers. Um. No, it's not going to be a problem. It's just I want to do something, but I want to wait for him to get back. Um. Oh, I know what you can do to pass the time, Bill. Take off all of your clothes. No. <laughs> yes. No. Um, <laughs> Bill has had an interesting week. <laughs> oh. And by that, call, and yeah. by that, I am of course talking about the fact that he parted company with his favorite hat. No. Um, oh. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I can tell, I tell about that too. <laughs> no, but uh, why don't you re- re- regale the listeners with the story of your daring manly trip to the hospital? <laughs> <laughs> If you follow me on Facebook or on Twitter, you already know the basics of this. Uh, okay, so for those of you who don't follow me on Facebook or on Twitter, which there's quite a bit of you out there, on Wednesday night, I took an excursion to the hospital. And I didn't give a lot of specifics why in my initial tweet slash Facebook post because I was in fucking agony and I was sitting in a waiting room waiting to get admitted into the hospital, and I was bored, but I was also in agony, so I didn't want to type anything too long. And what had happened was the, that night after I had gotten out of work, I was editing a uh, the school project I mentioned earlier, the news broadcast about asshole rats, winner I am. <laughs> and I was done, and I, I was rendering it, and I was getting ready to go to bed, so... I'm one of those guys who needs music to, like, be the soundtrack for getting changed. So I put on, since it's October, I put on the Wolfman soundtrack and was listening to the scene where Larry is chasing Gwen through the woods. So I get up and I take off my my work uniform. I still have my work uniform on at this point. I pull off my work uniform, throw it off to the side... And then I start taking my pants off, and I'm getting the, I have them around my ankles. And I look up, and I'm looking up at the screen cap, and I'm like, that was a good fucking scene. Listening to the music, the music's building. And I start to try to pull off my legs, pull off the legs of my pants, rather. Pull off my legs. <laughs> this is why Phil went I started to rip off my own legs in tribute to the Wolfman. Um, what happened was I uh, was pulling off my legs with just my feet. I wasn't using my hands like I should do. And I was doing this standing, and I lost my balance, and I tripped, and I was like, fuck, I am not going to fall over this. This would be a stupid reason to fall. So first, I tried to, like, grab onto the bed and, like, push myself back up with my right hand. But I didn't, uh, but I didn't, it didn't succeed. So I ended up, my, my, um, my hand ended up, ended up rolling off the bed, and I ended up kind of turning a little bit. Like, towards off my bed, but with the left side of my body facing out towards the floor. So I'm like, I have to, I have to try and break my fall, otherwise I'm going to fall on my shoulder and I'm going to get a really bad bruise. So if I kind of catch myself, I'll just kind of fall over and I'll be fine. The science was not sound on that decision. No. So I roll, I, I get over, and I stick out my left hand to try and break my fall... And I put, therefore, I put all of my body's weight, which guess what, is a fucking lot, because I'm tall and fat, and all of the weight goes on my left wrist, and I go down. To to recap, for those of you who aren't really thinking about the science here, 
um, he had the choice between catching himself with his shoulder, which, which is, you know, it, it's a lot of, it, you know, there's muscle and there's, there's, there's um, fat and all that uh, protection, or he could catch his fall with his hand, which is essentially a bunch of bones with skin wrapped around it. <laughs> um, this was kind of a repeat of young Bill's common sense, and I fell over, pivoted off my left wrist, and then came down again with all my body's weight on my left wrist. I came down, and I rolled over, and I gra- and I roll onto my ass, and I grab my my hand because I knew it was gonna start hurting, and I was like, "Oh, this is gonna hurt really bad, but it's gonna pass really quickly." This was not the case. I realized when I felt it that I I was like, oh, please don't tell me I just broke my wrist. And I grabbed it, and that's when the pain started. This throbbing, sharp, searing pain in my wrist that went from my wrist to the end of my uh, my forearm when it first happened. And it went down as the, as the hours went on. So holding my wrist, it's throbbing. I'm screaming out in agony, and obviously, fat ass that I am, this fall made a fucking noise, so everyone in my house is awake now, and my dad is screaming up to me, yelling if I'm okay, and I can't really respond because I'm in fucking pain and I'm screaming. And well, I'm not screaming. I'm what? What would be like the word? I'm more calling out in pain, um, because screaming is not what men do. Um, so exactly. Because <laughs> this was like the manliest of injuries ever. Yeah, he, he was. He was yelling. <laughs> I was yelling at my own stupidity. God damn it, Billy, you fucking idiot. I was actually kind of saying that, though, and I was cursing, and I was, you know, hollering in pain. And finally I had to get up. Sailors were outside flushing. And... <laughs> I was yelling down at my dad. I said, Dad, I think I just broke my wrist. Obviously in painful um, voice. Um, And I said, Dad, I think I just broke my wrist. And I'm like, and he's like, fuck, god damn, he's pissed, because it's like, it's like 1 o'clock in the morning at this point. And he doesn't want to have to take me to the hospital. So he's like, go see what your mother says, and if it's really bad, I'll take you to the hospital. I was like, fuck, I don't I – because don't, I don't want to go to the hospital because I have to drive to school in the morning. But it legit felt broken when it first happened. So I'm like, shit. So I go into my mom's room. I tell her what happened. She's trying to decide whether or not it's broken. Obviously, I'm in shearing pain. I'm in so much pain that I'm fucking shivering. Because I've only broken a bone once in my entire life when I was in seventh grade. And in seventh grade, I broke I broke this same wrist, but I did it skateboarding, so it was a little bit manlier um, than this uh, tripping over pants and tr- and breaking my fall with my left wrist. So um, what was this during the filming of Ghost Skater? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no deal, and this was actually quite a bit later. Um, or no, it was actually before. Hmm. Yeah, this is before Ghost Skater was a thing. For those of you who don't know what that is, go back to one of the first videos I ever made. You're in for a laugh. <clears throat> Uh, anyway, so uh, I was in enough pain where I was like, yeah, Ma, I think I need to go to the hospital. I really think it's broken. So my dad takes me to the hospital, and I don't know if any – Dylan, have you ever broken a bone before? Um, I don't think so, no. I've had legs. You don't think so? <laughs> no, I, I'm, I haven't. Bill, I'm not a pussy like you. If I break – if something starts hurting, I just walk it off. Yeah, exactly. No, um, I've had like sprains and stuff, but I don't think I've ever had a legit like break, heel back together situation. <laughs> You never, had to, you never had to wear a cast? Um, I don't think, no, no. No, I had to wear it on my cock, but that was a different story. Because <laughs> I broke it in like an epic orgy. No. Uh. <laughs> um, no, but it sucks. Uh, but I had, you know, I had experience with it before because I broke my wrist when I was a kid, and it was the same wrist. So I started to think maybe this wrist is like cursed um, to always be the one that I break. So I go to the hospital, waiting in the waiting room, post the Facebook post. I'm texting David, telling him what happened. Um, David Gorzard, obviously. And he was like, Bill, I don't think it's broken because I've had that before. I think what happened was you think it's broken because all that's in your hand is nerves and, uh, and nerve endings because that's where you have all your feeling. You know, that's why when you put your hand over a hot stove, it hurts. Uh, so yeah. I was like, all right. Yes, I've had that. <laughs> Um, Dylan has, he's never broken a bone, but he has placed his hand on a hot stove just to see how it feels, just to test his own, just to test his own strength endurance. Um, uh, so I was like, all right, that kind of makes sense, but I'm going to wait for what the doctor says. So I got x-rays. Um, oh my God, I'm missing a major part of the story here. So I'm in the waiting room and I fill out all the paperwork and they start taking me to, to get me to a bed. 
So I'm like, all right, I guess I'm going to go to the emergency room. But then they start taking me into a different room. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? And I realize they're taking me to the pediatric center. Now, so, now, for those of you who don't know what the pediatric center of a hospital is, that's where they put all the kids. Yes, because, now, because I they're think, thinking um, Bill had an owie, so they... <laughs> <laughs> had an owie. So they took him to the pedi- pediatrician <laughs> for a possible broken bone. And I'm 18, so legally I'm an adult. So I'm rolling my eyes like, God damn it. Now, also, keep in mind, I'm in agony, so I'm cursing my fucking mouth off I, I, at every time I move. I'm a crazy bill, but something tells me that your your hospital may not be the best around. Um, I I would say that that's a fair assumption, Dylan, yes. <laughs> um. So we go to the pediatric center. I sit down. I'm like, fuck. Everyone around me is a fucking child. And you're, and you're cussing, so that's great. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm trying to keep my, my, my voice down. I'm trying to stop cursing. Now, here's why I bring up the pediatrics thing, aside from my continued embarrassment of my supposed masculinity. Um, so, first of all, I, I, I hurt my wrist while tripping over pants in my own room um, while listening to the Wolfman soundtrack. While tripping over pants. <laughs> and then, number two, I'm being taken to the pediatric center. Now, here is why I brought up the pediatric center in detail. A little girl, no older than seven, is brought in at the same time as me. And I had no idea why, because she looked healthy. So I'm like, all right, maybe she's just having problems. She looks, you know, like, she looks over at Bill, and she says, what are you in for? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> and she's like, are you that Zazubar guy who hates, who hates on Godzilla 98? And you're like, And I'm yeah. like, yes. And she kicks me in the shin. She says words that you didn't even know existed. <laughs> she started speaking to me in like the, the language of Satanists. Her eyes glowed red and fire abounded. <laughs> it was weird. Um, anyway, so... Uh, no, that didn't happen. Um, Obviously not. Uh, no. <laughs> I was not recognized at this hospital by this little girl. Um, would have been the best time for you to get recognized, though. Right when I'm screaming in agony and I'm in pain. Um, so uh, the reason why I bring her up is because she's having issues. Now, not of the female variety per se, though that could have been what was going on. She's in the bed next to me. There's a, only a curtain separating us, so there's no sound barrier. So she's talking to her doctor, and they won't stop asking her whether or not she can go poo-poo. <laughs> Clearly, I clearly this little here. girl was the latest victim of Bane. <laughs> or asshole rats. Um, <laughs> oh, I couldn't stop thinking that when they were when she was talking about the pain. I was like, is she suffering from asshole rats? Which was funny because I was just editing the broadcast before I got there. So maybe, maybe I had maybe I had predicted the future. Maybe Bane's actual plan was to infect people with asshole rats. <laughs> maybe. Um. So. Now, here's why I bring this part up. I'm sitting here in my pajamas with a, with a potentially broken bone and awkward silence sitting across from my 53-year-old father, who is half asleep and doesn't want to be there, listening to this little girl talk about her bowel dysfunctions. And I'm sitting there just like, Ew! And I'm looking at my dad just like, I can't help, and I can't help but smirk. And he has like this stone cold fucking middle aged man face. And I'm just like, this is terrible. (laughs) It was just a really awkward moment. And fucking, I'm just sitting there just like, why did they put me in with this shit? There's babies crying, fucking little girls talking about how they can't take a poo poo. And. I'm sitting here in agony, cursing and I mean, staring awkwardly at my 50-year-old father. I never understood the purpose of calling it poo-poo. <laughs> Why? That, Wait, what? that is so much more ridiculous than just saying, can you poop? <laughs> I don't know. Well, there's this weird, like, thing with adults where they have to say things twice and that makes it okay. 
You think about a pee pee, poo poo, bye bye, dad dad, mama. It's weird. It's their fault that kids are so stupid. <laughs> they 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 instill this it's in not, us from it's not babies. The lack of, it's not the lack of decent American education. It's the fact that parents are fucking retarded. <laughs> Um. Anyway, so I got X-rays, and, and those um, among us who are actually intelligent must have just been like that kid from Son of the Mask, and it was like, "Say, Dad, Dad," and we were just like, "Mother." <laughs> um, I was one of those kids who was raised on television, so whatever I heard on the TV, I repeated. I can't help but tell you that every time someone would bring up smoking, I would quote Gondo from Godzilla vs. Biolanti and being like. The inter- that intravena shit's no good for you. Stick to smoking. They're like, that doesn't make any sense. I am smoking. Um, I don't know. That's just the kind of kid I was. Maybe I'm weird. Um, I don't know. Maybe. Um, anyway, so I got x-rays. They told me, you don't have a broken bone. It's, it's, there's no fracture. It's just a bad sprain. They gave me this black um, Velcro uh, splint. And they said, put this on for a couple days. Ice it. Keep it elevated. Um... And you should be good to go. I'm like, and the major question I had during this, the reason why I wanted to go to the hospital to see what was going on, was because I have to drive to school every day. Um, now, for those of you who don't live on Long Island, uh, I live in Carl Place, which is in Nassau County. I go to school in Suffolk County. Whole county over, I gotta take the the expressway to get there. And I don't know if any of you've ever driven on a New York expressway. It fucking sucks. Traffic. Idiot drivers, constant accidents, constant cops. It's a nightmare. And to have to do that with one hand and a potentially broken arm, that sounded like that sounded like shit. But they told me that as long as I um, uh, could use my fingers, I would be okay driving. And I could still use my fingers. It was just the wrist that was fra- uh, sprained. So um, I was still able to drive. As long as you don't like go out there and shoot a fifty caliber, I think you'll be... <laughs> Uh, it was still hell driving because driving with any kind of thing attached to your arm that isn't just like a watch, it's fucking hell uh, to try and keep – to try and steer a steering wheel properly. Um, I mean, Dylan, I know you drive. I mean, dude, you can attest. It is a pain in the ass to turn with just one hand. Yeah, yeah. Because you have to go hand over hand and uh, you know you have to go counterclockwise. It's just hell. Um. But anyway, I got to, I, it was just a bad sprain. I put the cast on for a couple days, and now I'm feeling better. I worked. I, I actually went to work today. Uh, I, I don't have to wear the cast anymore. I just have to. I just have to not sleep on it now. And they said that it'd be okay, so I'm good to go. So in the end, not really a big deal. And now it's just time to come up with a much more masculine lie for why it happened. Even though you've just announced this one on the internet on your podcast. To nine. Dylan, I don't, I don't, I don't put a lot of forethought into things these days. Um, to um, nine hundred and how many do you have now? Uh, fifty-eight by today. Nine hundred and fifty-eight people. Do you check it every day? Nine hundred and fifty-eight people. Yes. <laughs> I do check it every day. Um, guys, keep my secret. No. Um. Uh. Anyway. So. Uh, yeah, that was my little excursion to the hospital. Nice. And do you want to uh, yeah. do you want to regale everybody with the story of how you had to part with your favorite hat? I don't know how much else there is to say about that. No, I mean it's not really a story as much as it is an ongoing problem. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know this as well, I uh, I have this hat that I wear in almost all my videos when I appear on camera. The uh, blue Captain America hat. Um. And I've been wearing it for almost a year now, but it feels like longer. But it's my favorite hat that I own just because it's custom made. It was a gift from someone. Uh, it's not It's not like a – it's not made by Marvel. It was made by a street vendor in New York City who does these really amazing uh, airsoft uh, hats. And it was painted. It was signed. It was really cool. Um, and I, I love the shit out of it. And uh, I've been wearing – I wear it everywhere I go. Whenever I leave the house, I put that hat on. Um. And just over time, I have a big fucking head, and I like I like to wear my hats tight because um uh, I don't know I just like to wear my hats tight. So um the the strap was constantly buckled in, and my big fucking head is trying to push its way out. So just over time, 
it, you know, the the seams start to wear down. So, you know, just time happened, um, and it's been almost a year, and finally it gave in, and it said, you fucking fat ass, Ugh! and it split. So the hat, the, uh, for those of you who don't know the anatomy of a baseball cap, uh, you know, there's a strap. The anatomy of the baseball cap. <laughs> Oh, and maybe, maybe that should be the episode's title. Um, oh, I still like the other one. What was the other one? Magic of Asshole Rap? I think so. <laughs> um, uh, uh, there's a strap that allows you to make the hat tighter, and uh, that's what snapped, so I can't wear the hat anymore, otherwise I'd look like a fucking douchebag. Um, just walking around with, like, a strapless hat. Um, right. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 what keeps the hat structured. So, I can't wear that hat anymore unless I get it fixed. And uh, at this point, I'm, I'm just I have other hats. I think I'm just gonna walk around in my uh, my actual prop hat from uh, Werewolf of Carl Place from now on. Um, my stone racing hat. Yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna wear that for now until I get a better uh, a better hat. Um, see, the problem with the stone racing cap is it doesn't fit me that great. Um, it, not only is it really tight, but it's also really small. Mm. So, uh, it doesn't fit me that great, so I don't really like wearing it unless it's for the movie, so, um, that was a problem. And on set, if I wasn't in the scene, I was always wearing the Captain America hat anyway, I had that one on standby for when I had to get on camera, so, um, when it was just, and when it's just me in the director's chair, I'm always in my Captain America hat, so, I guess from now on, though, until I get a better hat, I'm gonna wear the Stone Racing one. Um, anyway, so that was, like, the most boring story ever. Um, yeah, now that we're down so, to only uh, two viewers, how can we ax them off? Um, <laughs> what the fuck happened to Andres? He was having some sort of issue with Skype. I don't even know. Um, I'm gonna find out what's going on. I, I messaged him on Facebook, and it, it crashed on him, and he was trying to log back in, and it was giving him this weird message that he couldn't log back in because he was already logged in on this computer. No shit. And then he, um... Then he, like, rebooted his computer to see if that would fix the problem, and of course this was the time that he had to install updates. Oh. And he just popped online. Oh, now? Yeah. Alright, so let's, so, uh, let's see. Oh, he just texted me. Okay, he's back. Oh. He is on it. Perfect. That, just when we run out of things to talk about, he's back. That was like the most convenient thing ever. Oh, um, it's all on him. Well, we're going to do his segment, but I have something I want to do first. Hey! hey! You missed <gasps> the greatest 20 minutes of podcasting ever. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm very sorry for that. Uh, I mean, there were uh, heavenly lights. We got blowjobs. We hung out with pirates. <laughs> Again? <laughs> Um, Again, in the summer, I remembered it. We went swimming with the dolphins. End up punching a shark in the face. Yeah, we fought off raging Cajun redneck gators. We hung out with Moosla. It was amazing. Bill punched a guy out with his bad hand. Were we? No, I, we we were we kept going. Um, okay. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut that out. So don't worry about it. Anyway, so one, two, three, keep on going. So Andres is back. Um, yeah. Everyone, uh, what you actually missed, Andres, is that Bill was just regaling them with the fantastic, epic story that is up there amongst um, the the twelve. The Odyssey, it, Homer's it's Odyssey. Up there amongst the twelve labors of Hercules, as far as manly uh, stories of how he injured himself. <laughs> by masturbating too many times. Yeah. Yeah, that was Andres' theory about why I sprained my wrist. That's how I sprained my wrist. <laughs> that's how that's how Dylan lost his left hand. Um, <laughs> Yet strangely, yeah, he's regrown it back. He's a time no, it's, a, it's an science. It's one of those like Anakin Skywalker hands, or not Anakin, uh, Luke. You know the ones that it actually looks normal. Yeah. <laughs> Um, anyway, so Andre, she came back just in time because we ran out of things to talk yeah, about. Um, I'm very sorry for leaving you guys like that. I mean, I know it's high, very unprofessional. I'm sure the audience out there is probably wondering, you know, God, what what a deuce just leaving those two like that. I don't, yeah, you fucking asshole. Don't think, we should lynch you. I don't think they're thinking that just because we've been so boring. I don't think they're listening anymore. <laughs> like Bill. No, we kept it like going. Like Bill, I don't know but if guys, you need this. <laughs> Never mind. Go on. <laughs> Guys, yeah. I've been trying to do something for the past hour and a half that I haven't gotten to yet. I want to play a game with you guys. Okay. 
I'm going to lock you in a garage oh, this is and force you to cut off your own hands. No, 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 no. Uh, I was uh, just about to make the games. jigsaw joke. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I, I beat you to it, Dylan. What now? Um, no. That's fine, Bill, because play... I beat you to something, and you'll know about it when Andres posts it. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> did, you guys, did you guys finally fuck? No. <laughs> Why would he post that? <laughs> I don't you know what you guys like. You know what would happen to my account if I were to post something like that? Yeah, people would just cry out. Why was that hat? Why was that recorded? <laughs> no, I get my account terminated. Like two seals fighting over a donut. <laughs> um. Anyway, w- wait. What the fuck are you guys talking about? Oh, you'll find out eventually. 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 Uh, yes, I like to keep I'm... you in suspense. When are you posting this? Because now I need to know. Hopefully by the end of the week. Hmm. Mm, yes, yes. Um, yes. We'll see. We'll see about that, Andres. Member who's member who owns this show. Yep, I you know. epi- I epically put on my cowboy hat and my shades and I walk away. You only live twice, Mr. Andres. Yes, you do, Mr. Perez. You only live twice. Um, yo- or yolt, as I like to call it. Yeah, I, ab- uh, I, I abbreviate <laughs> them whenever I'm t- whenever I'm like listing them and <laughs> I like abbreviate all of them. No, 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 but have you ever, you know, you know that fucking annoying ass expression Yolo. nowadays, YOLO? Yeah. YOLO! I like to say YOLT just to make fun of people. Oh, God, I don't remember what I was wearing, but it was like somebody was like, had like a fake tweet that, from like Jesus. <laughs> and I forget what it said, but after it was like, hashtag you only live forever, hashtag <laughs> oh my me. <laughs> now, hey man, um, as you all know, the original saying is Hakuna Matata. Hakuna Matata. Oh, what a wonderful, what a wonderful phrase. Um, Hakuna No, we're not going to do that. Oh, we just did. SOS, the musical. <laughs> um, anyway, boys, so we're going to play a little game here on the Sons of Sarazal podcast before we let Andres go into his normal segment. We're going to play a game that I actually created a long time ago on the channel that I never actually did anything with. Uh, it was a joke in the Godzilla Gang Season 1 where Gigan talks about how uh, himself and Gojira played a game with Jet Jaguar and Megalon called Kaiju Roulette. And that was supposed to be the explanation for why Gojira had major brain damage. Oh. Yeah. Godzilla Gang, that's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan's, Dylan's human right now. Um, anyway. Uh... <laughs> Oh, God. Um, anyway, so I actually have decided to create a legit version of Kaiju Roulette. A real fucking version. Um, with actual rules and shit. So here... We need to start a, is do what, we need to start a Kickstarter? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. It's not going to be a board game. It's going it's to be something we'll do on the podcast every now and then. Um, but I figured this will be helpful to fill time before I let Andreas go off in his segment. Um... We'll only do a couple rounds of this just because it's not going to work that well just because of the speakers. Um, but what Kaiju Roulette is going to be, the rules are this, boys. Do you guys want to play, first of all? Sure, why not? I like playing games where I, I don't know the rules, too. Dylan's just like, fuck you, Bill, and he hangs up. <laughs> yes, yes, I am right now. No. <laughs> no. Um, uh, but Kaiju Roulette, here are the rules. I am going to play a kaiju sound effect. Uh-huh. And you have to guess the kaiju and the year and the film, not the year of the of that roar's use. So if, as an example, uh-huh. if I play Ooh, I, I think uh, I'm going to be able to I think I I'm going to be able to get the kaiju's but the years are going to get me. <laughs> um yeah, well that's what makes it challenging. Um mm-hmm. So Let's say an example would be uh, Gamera's. No, no, no. Uh, if I played a Godzilla roar, you guys would have to tell me which year that roar was used. Okay. Oh my. Okay, so we're gonna start yeah, off with an easy. <laughs> we're gonna start off with an easy one. Okay. You guys ready? Hold on, I'm getting. All right. So those okay, are the rules. Yeah. Those are the rules. Mm-hmm. Kaiju roar. You have to guess the year. Uh, you have to guess what the kaiju is and the year it was used. Okay. So that's that's what the challenge is. Kaiju and now for some kaiju, it's not, so that's, for some it's not going to matter. But since you know, uh, since we're all kaiju buffs, you'll probably get it anyway. Uh huh. Um, 
So what that's if, the idea. I don't so, know about that, Bill. <laughs> I'm terrible at remembering details. <laughs> <laughs> Yet he uh, he runs a show called Kaiju Spotlight where he gives details about these different kaiju. Um, yeah, he's a fucking weirdo. Yeah, yeah, um, because you know what? That's called that's called research. <laughs> <laughs> well, you should remember it, asshole. No. Um. All right, guys. Who's ready to play? Oh yeah. Kaiju. You didn't let me fucking finish. No. Um, Sorry. All right, God. guys. All right, guys. We're gonna start off with an easy one. Here is your first kaiju roar. Orgo. No. Um. um. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's clearly King Caesar. No, no, okay. All right, let's. I have. To, I'm gonna go to both of you. You're both gonna okay. give a guess. Okay. And whoever was right, you know, you'll get a point. Uh-huh. Okay. So Andres, because uh-huh. you're the first one on my Skype stream right now. Okay. Oh, Andres, what what is the kaiju and what year was it used? I'm gonna I'm gonna give a little bit of leeway on uh-huh. this one. Okay, because okay, 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 obviously Godzilla, but as for what movie? No, you don't, doesn't be that the movie. I'm okay. looking for the. Year. Okay, I'm gonna take a shot in the dark and not not start. Yeah, I'm, I know Showa era, so I'm gonna take a shot in the dark and go sixty four. Ooh, you are way off. Okay. okay, Dylan, Kaiju and Year. Godzilla, seventy five. I'm gonna give it to you. You were close enough. It was Godzilla seventy four from Godzilla vs Mechagodzilla. Huh. All right, so Dylan gets the point on that one. I'm going to keep score. A, D. So Dylan gets one point. Okay. Yay, now for the part where I lose every other round, failing to keep up with the expectations (laughs) that I set in round one. (laughs) Okay. So now we are going to go to another Kaiju Roar. Okay. I'm going to go for a little bit of a more challenging one this time. Okay. Hey, this actually brings something up while, while you're getting while you're getting that. We need we need to find somebody that can like do sound effects and have somebody make a moose la roar. Oh, I already know what it's going to be. It should just be like a high-pitched version of a normal moose sound because moose sound fucking freaky. Oh yeah, we can just have Adam record it. No, well, there's none of this stuff online, so... Yeah, but we can get an actual... Yeah, we're going to have Adam go out into the wild of New Hampshire and just track down a no, moose he, and he, just get he, it pissed off and He it. told me that he has a pet moose. Yeah, it, yeah, that was, uh, it was off... Live in his house, Dylan! What? It doesn't live in his house. It lives outside, doesn't it? No, it's a wild moose that just comes around his house every once oh, in a while, thought, as far I as I thought know. maybe he had it, like, tied to a stake or something. Okay. No! Take it out some kibbles and guess. <laughs> Imagine like he actually has like a a giant dog house for the moose. <laughs> he has it has a collar, its name is Spot. It plays fetch. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's they, it, they have a, a door like a sign on their door that says, uh uh watch out for moose. Yeah, but, okay, so and it lives in a while, but I'm assuming that he's like Gandalf and he can go outside and whistle and it'll come to him. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it. Um, <laughs> Anyway, so you guys, are you guys ready for your next Kaiju Roar? Yes! Alright, this one, I, I'm going to ask for a year, but it's going to be pretty obvious, okay? Okay. This year is your next Kaiju Roar. Ah, okay. Kaiju and year. Let's start with Dylan. Uh, this one's hard. This one is hard. Um, can you play it again? Yes. Kaiju and year. About to make a really dumb guess. He's like Moose Two Thousand Thirteen. Yeah, no, um <laughs> King Kong in a robot suit. <laughs> Fighting demons from outer space. You know what, Andres, because I can't think of anything else. King Kong sixty two. 
<laughs> no. Okay. Andres, Kaiju and Year. Verugan from 1966. You son of a bitch! Yep, that's it. I love that roar. It's like so freakishly like high pitch, and then it's followed by a really deep roar afterwards. No wonder I hardly ever watch Frankenstein Conquers the World. No, Barugan. <laughs> oh, Bar- oh, wait. Andres, did you say Barragon? No, Barugon from Gamera okay. Gamera Barugon. What year, what year did you say? 66. Okay, good okay, boy. Okay, okay, that's right. a movie that I... I thought I just caught you fucking up. What? No. Um... That's a movie that I watch even less often. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's always so fucking confusing. Dude, imagine if you um, actually do put Barragon's roar. It'll be so confusing because that's also Gorosaurus's roar and Varan's roar and the half of Ultraman's ro- monster's roar. <laughs> He's right. He's yeah. right. He's right, Bill. You can never use any of those because they're the same. And all the 90s... no, I'm I'm, I'm going to be careful with that because that that would make it too hard. And all the '90s monsters are Rodan. So. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right. Well, I am getting the next kaiju roar. Titanosaurus. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that won't be too easy. Yeah, me and Andres would probably both right, like guys, yell it at you at the same time. Next, yeah. Here's your next kaiju roar. The year is what I'm looking for on this one. Okay. Okay? Yeah. All right. Oh, God. Here we oh, go. Oh, God. Andres, uh-huh. kaiju, and year. Angiris from 1974. No. Okay. Dylan, Kaiju and Year. Angiris from 1955? Yes! Really? Yep, that was the 55 version, Roar. Huh. I like the original one better. It's a little more creepy. Cool. As much as I don't like that movie, I like that movie. I don't like the fact that sometimes it comes out of Godzilla's mouth, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucked up, but I, I still like that roar. They fuck up Godzilla's roar royally. In that movie. Um, plus his name. Plus his name. Have you seen the Japanese version? <laughs> yeah, I've got it. I've got it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? But um, I can't resist talking about Gigantus the Fire Monster. <laughs> I know. Oh boy! Better, better um, than the volcano monster. I, I've told I've told you my idea for how you could do Gigantus in a movie and make it work. Somebody clones Godzilla and names it Gigantus, and it would be a really cool reference, and it would be awesome. <laughs> and it would be awesome, man. All right, so another kaiju. Uh, I should see. I was gonna set this up before, beforehand, but mm-hmm. I uh, didn't have time. So. Fuck that up! Fuck that! Fuck that up on my part. Oh, oh, you mean you didn't have any time in those twenty minutes that Andres was gone? <laughs> well, no, because we were talking. You were talking. Oh, I was talking. Oh yeah, fuck you. Um, no. All right. So another kaiju. All right, I got it. All right. <laughs> Go for 2013. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, you're right now. Um, all right, boys. Year doesn't really matter on this one, mm-hmm. but still, I need that anyway. Okay. Kaiju and year. Of course you do. Oh, yes. Dylan, Kaiju and year. Uh, um. Oh come on, dude! I I I'm having. This was a gimme. This was. Yeah. Play it again. <laughs> that was a gimme. Come on, give you one more chance. Is it Mecha Godzilla? <laughs> no. What you, what you should have said was it's Clarence 2025. <laughs> yes, exactly. Andre, since uh, I, I guess that you know it, Kaiju and Year. Ebera 1966. Fuck. Correct. <laughs> How'd you know? 
not get that, dude? I don't know, man. All right, all right. I seriously consider Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster be a very under underrated move installment. I know how you <laughs> yeah, feel. See, well, I, see, Bill, that's why he got it. He's the one that likes Sea Monster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I seen your review. Your defense was for was decent, but oh my god, I can't stand that movie. And I respect your opinion. As you must. Oh no. Uh, okay. It's obviously gonna... wrong. So now I'm just going to break the All barriers right. of space and time to win this game. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, no cheating. All right, you guys are dead even now. Two to two. No uh, pressure. So, let's, so uh, we'll, we'll we'll do uh, we'll do seven rounds. Just and if if we need more, we'll see. If if we're tied. Okay. So here's the next one. I'll ask for a year, but I'm not. It's it's not going to be very accurate. So. I don't need a year on this one, but anyway, here's the next war. God. Andre, oh. Kaiju, and Year. Oh God, I wish that I could hear that with better quality. Um, you want me to play it again? Please. Okay. Hang on, let me put on my, my speakers. Okay. That's... Kaiju and you. Uh, the Deadly so... Mantis. <laughs> <laughs> it is obviously the greed to be human. No, okay. Um... I wish. No, man, it's the giant claw. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're both wrong. It's the bees from 20,000 fathoms. Thank you very much. Oh, is it really? Okay, it's, ex- it's actually the, the, the hexapus from It Came From Beneath the Sea. Actually, both of you are wrong. It's actually the octopus from King Kong vs. Godzilla, the greatest movie ever made. Thank you very much. <laughs> anyway, Andre, worst, re- worst reference ever. <laughs> All right, Andreas. Uh-huh. No, no, no more kidding. Okay. Uh, um, year. Okay. I'm gonna take a shot in the dark and say Mecha Godzilla '93. No. Okay. All right, Dylan. Do you need me to play it again? Was he right about either of those? <laughs> I'm not. I will neither. I will neither confirm nor deny. Motherfucker. Okay. Um. All right, Dylan. Do you need me to play it again, or do you remember it? Uh, pl- play it one more time. All right, Dylan. Kaiju and Year. Hmm. Mecha Godzilla. There's only two versions left. Um. <laughs> <laughs> 2002 slash three. Yep, you are correct. Wow. I'll take that because I, I don't even know what year it's from, so I'm just going to take both of those. So, Dylan, you are ahead with one Kaiju roar to your name above Andres. All right, boys. We will do two more rounds to decide who the winner is. Okay, let's let's get some hard ones rolling. Oh my! Oh my! <laughs> oh my! God! <laughs> ah! Oh my! Oh my! Oh, oh Spa. my! <laughs> oh, Spa. My favorite. There's something on the wing. <laughs> Chatman. All right, let's see if this will work properly. Okay. So, who just went first? Andre, so Dylan, you're up next. Here is your kaiju roar, gentlemen. Of course. Okay. Damn it, he said, ooh, okay. Um, Dylan, kaiju, and roar. And do you need me to replay it? Did you just say kaiju and roar? Because I can't do that. Uh, ka- kaiju and you. No, no, Sorry. no, you have to repeat the roar, Dylan. <laughs> you have to do an impression of the roar. <laughs> 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 wow. <laughs> it just sounds like a lot of just like... Wog. <laughs> 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 All right, Dylan. K- 
Kaiju and Year. Huh. Player again. Come. All right. One more time. All right, Dylan. Come on. You're ahead. Not anymore. Um. <laughs> Um, Virus. No, that was so wrong. It's embarrassing. <laughs> that was really wrong. I thought that. I thought that was a gimme. All right, Andres, Kaiju and Year. Gyrus, nineteen sixty-six. Yes, sir. Fuck. All right, you guys are tied. Damn that cross between us. We'll that call this the tie. <laughs> we'll call this the tiebreaker, and then we'll go into the general news update. Okay. Hold on, I got guys. So, I have the the perfect song uh, for this <laughs> monumentous occasion. I'm waiting with bated breath. Are you gonna win? Are you gonna play? We are the champions. If you win, <laughs> no. <laughs> or you're the best around. Oh, here we go. <laughs> it's like my the ultimate battle music. Let's see. Oh, yes. <laughs> Go ahead, Zazibar. Hang on, guys. Test out this <laughs> you can't have it playing in the background, Andre. <laughs> Andre, you okay. gotta turn it off. All right. All right. We're not gonna be able to hear the roar. <laughs> All right, guys. Um... I need to test out this link first, though, because I don't trust it, so I'm going to mute my mic for a sec. Okay. All right. I was about to say, what what kind of kaiju goes, bum, bum, bum. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Hmm. All right, guys. This is a really hard one. A fitting tiebreaker for the Sons of Sarazawa, who pride themselves as some of the biggest kaiju fans on the internet. Well, I'm done. So hope it's been a good game. Everybody. So, I... <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys think you're up for it, gentlemen, here is your role. That turkey monster from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Oh! Andres. Kaiju and year. I'm gonna have to hear that again. Oh shit! Okay. Andres, Kaiju and year. Ah, son of a gun. Jeez, so many options. I'm going to. Judge it based on the length of that roar and say that it's Varan 1958. Correct! Andres Perez, you have won the first ever Sons of Sarazawa podcast edition of Kaiju Roulette. And Dylan, you have failed miserably. No, uh, you guys both did good. You guys are both winners in my eyes. You, did, you have prided yourselves amongst the kaiju community. You both did very well. Dylan, you did very well. Though there were some moments where I worried about you, buddy. Um, but Andres, you ultimately turned out to be our winner. So guess what your reward is? You get to do the same thing you do every week. <laughs> that is not too far off. Because, ladies and gentlemen, as soon as I pull up this theme, we are going to go into the general news update. And now, with a general news update, we go now 
Tundra or is it also known the part of the video where it turns into Pokemon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I want to be the best. The best. Uh, like no one uh, ever was. Catch them is my real test. To train them, is, train my them is my cause. I will travel, I will travel across, across the land. Searching far and wide. Each Pokemon can it. understand the power the that's power inside. inside my dick. <laughs> <laughs> It was funny. Like, all right, on. It's funny thing. It's like right, on. today, um, today is the day that Pokemon X and Y version came out, and Knew it. I, yeah, I just have <laughs> to <laughs> pick up my copy of Pokemon Y version, and I was actually like starting it up while during those like twenty minutes where I was trying to get my computer to update. So basically, I was gonna ditch you guys for Pokemon. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> we thought no, he was, was having like, computer just, issues. He really just liked <laughs> to play Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> I went either he was like, Fuck those back. guys. And then he lost a battle I, and he got mad and came back. I don't need you as long as I've got you, Charmander. <laughs> He's talking about his dick. Um, he calls it Charmander. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna pet my Charmander until it blows up. Gosh, Andres, you oh, should call no. it you should, no. you should call it Titanosaurus like all us normal nerds. <laughs> <laughs> Andres, let me ask you this yeah. before we go into the story. Uh-huh. Is it called X and Y because of the X and Y chromosomes? And if they mate, will it form Pokemon on X, Y, Z? It might not be far off because he was showing me some of the Mega Evolutions, and the ones on one game are considerably more manly than the ones on the other. But the thing is, it's yeah. backwards because the ones on X are manlier. Yeah, like, okay, <laughs> Bill, Bill, I want you to take a look at Mega Mewtwo X and Mega Mewtwo Y, and then take a look at Mega Charizard X and Mega Charizard Y. Otherwise known as the brand new additions to Power Rangers Mega Force. <laughs> yes, of course. Of course. Pretty much. Of course. Uh, okay, so the first news article I have is that um, Sega's well-known beloved mascot, Sonic the Hedgehog, is coming back to television in a brand new CGI animated series, tentatively called Sonic Boom, most likely a reference to the Sonic Boom song at the beginning of Sonic CD, which will... Uh, Fuck that news. <laughs> or, the fact yeah. that or the fact that Sonic Boom is actually a thing that happened. That is embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, Sonic Boom was a pretty awesome song. Sonic Boom, but Sonic Boom, Sonic... They ought to punch themselves in the throat. That is fucking stupid. And uh, it'll be a live... Yeah. You should make a show out of that one game where he turned into a werewolf. <laughs> I actually made a short film out of that, out of, out of the werehog thing. Or where he goes Super Saiyan. <laughs> um, so yeah, it'll be on car- uh, launching in Cartoon Network in the fall of 2014. And just a little side um, news, Sonic has been, uh, has been revealed that he's going to return in the next uh, Super Smash Brothers game for the 3DS and Nintendo, the Wii U. And we promise that someone some there, somewhere will care. <laughs> well, I, I used to be a, a Sonic fan back in the day. I mean, I used to love playing Sonic Adventure 1 and 2 Heroes. Um, mm-hmm. I eventually, like, the last Sonic game I played was Sonic Unleashed. I, I was, that was the one with the infamous Werehog. At that point, I kind of, like, dropped off. And, I don't know. Wasn't that game called really? Sonic I Unleashed? I wonder why yeah. you dropped off there. On From what I've heard about... about hmm? What is it about games called Unleash sucking? Oh yeah, right, right. I mean, even the Force Unleash was like average, to, you know, at best mediocre. Uh, see, yeah. see, what Sonic should have done is turned into a Super Saiyan a, a Werehog. And yes! then beyond well, that, it became wait, a Andres, Super Saiyan but... Four Were. <laughs> <laughs> Andres, yeah. that reminds uh-huh. me. What the fuck is is up with Super Saiyan Sonic? What does that What does it that was, mean? It, wait, you, you you've never seen Super Sonic? I don't deal with oh, that shit, man. Well, <laughs> um, it was in, in the very first Sonic game. They introduced these, um, these, uh, these. I guess you can call them a MacGuffin called Chaos Emeralds. Um, uh, in the first game there were six. In the second game there were seven. And at the end, your goal, the well, the main goal was to you know beat each level and all the bosses. But the secondary goal was to get into these special stages and where you can go through some sort of crazy maze like level and eventually get a Chaos Emerald. They're, each emerald is a different color. Why are they called still called emeralds? I don't know. 
and they um, each have a like each emerald has a large amount of power. In Sonic the Hedgehog 2, they introduce this concept where when Sonic collects all seven Chaos Emeralds, he becomes Super Sonic, which is an obvious homage to the Super Saiyans from Dragon Ball Z. He becomes yellow, his hair Homage, oh, you're so cute. And then he goes to another planet and he fights, fights the legendary Super Hog, who for some reason is green. <laughs> I, I just want, uh, Bill, I want you to check out, uh, just type Google Supersonic and you'll see. You'll... No, I know what, I know what oh, it looks okay, like. Okay. Um, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Okay, he looks so, like yeah, Super but... Saiyan Vegeta as a hedgehog. Yes, basically. And the fact um, that they even introduced their own versions of Vegeta and Trunks in the Sonic games in the forms of Shadow the Hedgehog and Silver the Hedgehog. Both of which can go Super Saiyan. Wow, they were really ripping off DBZ. God. Like, you know, both of them Shadow can go the, Super Saiyan as well, can't they? Yeah. Su- super, uh, not Super. Shadow the Hedgehog, he was, like the, and he was like the main bad guy who eventually turned into an anti-hero. And then Silver the Hedgehog, he came from the future to make the... To, he came from the future to the present to make the war to prevent the bad future from happening. Oh, so you mean there is Shadow his dad? No, no, Shadow's a completely like all three hedgehogs are unrelated. So they just oh, have there's to be no, hedgehog. There's yeah. no green alien anthropomorphic or uh, androgynous hedgehog <laughs> with like with like pink things on his arms. Called cool the hedgehog. With like pink things on his arms. <laughs> no. Ice, ice Cube the Hedgehog. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so that's that was it. You know, I'm pretty sure we have some video game fans out there who are fans of Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm Again, I'm totally kidding. Uh-huh. I, I mean, no disrespect to the franchise. It's just not my right, thing. Right, right. And it used to be my thing a lot, like, throughout, like, middle school and, like, half of my high school. I was, like, big, way big into Sonic the Hedgehog. But, again, the game's kind of, like, why I kind of got like um, tired of the games, and the fan base itself is disturbingly crazy. It makes, it makes... <laughs> as opposed to those Godzilla fans. Oh no, no, no! no. It's Godzilla no, fans. A large, large portion of Sonic fans I've noticed tend to fall into the uh, the category of human being known as a furry. Oh no! And, and here's the weird thing: when uh, Sonic the Hedgehog Four came out on the Play- on PlayStation Network and uh, Xbox Live. Um, a lot of people were upset because the Sonic in that game is the modern-day green-eyed Sonic instead of the classic black-eyed Sonic. They were like, oh my god, this, this game... Apparently means yeah, it. like, oh my god, this is not the classic Sonic design. This game will obviously suck. How can Sega betray us like this? That's so fucking stupid. I know, and yeah, it's like the Sonic fan base has sort of gotten this bad reputation among the video game fandoms. Yeah, yeah. I just, because Godzilla fans, we may like one suit over another, but we don't require them to keep it the same. <laughs> oh, wait. Also, yeah. it's not something as small and insignificant as eye color. We're talking about major like design flaws, like the son of Godzilla suit, as opposed to like the GMK suit. Yeah, like um, the, different, the difference between a, a scary ass Godzilla with blank eyes and the scaly Cookie Monster. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, and as for uh, as for uh, these this news show, I, I'm I guess I would uh, I uh, somewhat curious as to how this will play out. I and mean, we've we've had like several show CGI shows based off video games, such as the Rabbids show based off the Rayman Raving Rabbids game, and we apparently have a Pac Man show now. Yeah, yeah. That's stupid. Well, there was one in the uh, one in the late eighties yeah. about Pac-Man, and we, now we have a new one it's where Pac Man's like a little kid in high school, I guess, who saves the world with his friend Pac friends. Oh go. my god, that is and stupid! It, and it's, it's CG <laughs> as well. Yeah, it's CG. Is it called Pac Man Beyond? <laughs> yeah. No, it's called. I think it's called like Pac Man and the Ghostly Adventures. Um, you know, you guys remember the cinematic opus that was. Viva Pinata. Oh my. I remember I remember God. seeing commercials of it back on the Fox box, but <laughs> yeah, I always had voiced it. But yep. surprisingly, I heard that the video game was really good because it was made by Rare, who was res- also responsible for GoldenEye, Banjo-Kazooie, <laughs> Conquers Bad Fur Day. Wait, what, were they responsible for the uh, GoldenEye game from the movie or that really crappy one? <laughs> the the original GoldenEye 64. Okay. They didn't, they didn't do GoldenEye Reloaded? No, I'm pretty sure that's the only that's the only version I played. Wait, what? <laughs> Let's not talk Viva Pinata, you guys. How can you be a Bond fan and not play GoldenEye 64? 
Because I didn't have a Nintendo 64. You can but still you're... get one right now to swap meet. I am not going to... Wait, what? No, um, I am not going to buy it. He doesn't even have to do that. He can go over to CoolROM.com, download a Nintendo 64 Ooh. emulator, and play the game for free. Yeah. Wait, Dylan... Dylan, are you plugging this person? Are are you uh, being a background sponsor for this person? That sounds an awful lot like. No, a I'm not. I'm just saying you can get this game for free. You can get old Nintendo 64 games, download them onto your computer now, and play. And you also can get a free car if you call this number right now. Five five five. No, no, uh, man, no. You don't understand, man. Emulators—they changed my life. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, I played Golden Eye Reloaded. Which is <laughs> no, it's not. No, only the first level is like the original. And I, when I said, uh, I will not be judged by you two based on my, on my Bond fandom. Still, but when I said the crappy Golden Eye game, I was talking about the one that you told me about that one time, <laughs> where it's not even a Bond game; it's just there's a character called Golden Eye. Oh, oh, Golden Eye uh, Rogue Agent, <laughs> where Bond is in it for like two seconds, and you don't play yeah. as him. Yeah, that was weird. Let's um, move on. And Scar. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. So I may not be that much of a Sonic fan as I used to be, but I am a super huge fan of the Mega Man franchise. And um, I think about a year or two. A lot of Megas in this episode. And yeah. Um, there. Uh, what is the difference uh, between Mega Man X and Mega Man Y? <laughs> um. So about when they fought, they they form Jurassic they Mega made Man. Mega Man Zero. <laughs> Oh. So, Did they have to fuck? No. Uh, okay. Oh, I don't want, I don't care then. They're huh? robots. Okay. So, so um, about a year or two ago. I've never seen the humping robot from Robot Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> also, apparent, according to the, the, the magnificent film that is Transformers Revenge of the Fall and tri- Autobots lay, lay eggs. And Decepticons have scrotums. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyways, about a year or two ago, Mega Man's creator left Capcom due to uh, unknown circumstances. And since his departure from Capcom, Capcom all started becoming like a, uh, a jerk and started canceling all their upcoming Mega Man games, including the long-anticipated Mega Man Legends 3 for the Nintendo 3DS. Um, and so because of this, this might have inspired the Mega Man's creator to create his own unofficial Mega Man game called Mighty Number no. 9, which is the, um, and he had this uh, project on Kickstarter, and within like two, one or two days, it was all it already reached its goal. And th- two weeks ago, the Kickstarter campaign ended with them being able to reach every single one of their um, of their I forgot what it's called, like their when they get like extra money, like if you give us more money than we need, then we'll promise you this thing. We get this much money, we'll give you this thing, and. Yeah, I know what Sean Stretch about, goals, yeah. that's what they're called. Yeah, I was able to reach all of its uh, stretch goal raising, uh, what was it, uh, $3,844,464. And um, and Ooh. all it needed was uh, $900,000. And let's see. He better make a sick-ass game now with, like, tits and shit and, like, boozies and, like, fucking... Like giant robots and Mega Man Unchained. <laughs> <laughs> and Mega Man Unchained. Yeah, so this new game, Mighty Number no. Nine, killing bl- killing white racists. <laughs> um. So yeah, this uh Mighty Number no. Nine video game was pretty much similar to Mega Man, where it's a robot boy who is a side-scrolling um platformer where when you beat the bosses, you gain extra abilities. But while Mega Man, you gain weapons. With uh, Mighty Number no. Nine, he gains weapons and abilities, which allow him to transform his body to to perform different tasks. All these stretch goals include uh, two more stages, a Mac and Linux version versions, New Game Plus and Turbo Mode, Making of Documentary, a uh, bonus boss rush mode, uh, PS3, 360, Wii U versions, Challenge Mode, Extra End Stage and Boss, uh, Beck and Call uh, Online Co-op challenge mode, Beck and Call being like the this game's version of Mega Man and his sister role, um, intro stage and boss, support character, uh, PS4 and Xbox One versions, PS Vita and 3DS versions, single player call stage and boss, uh, optional retro style chiptune soundtrack with uh, an effects, 
And finally, the final stretch code being on online battle race mode. Power windows, heated seating. No. <laughs> Cruise control. So, satellite radio. <laughs> I'm, I'm very excited. I'm sure like any fan of Mega Man uh, out there is so excited and fans of side-scrolling platforming action. In terms of which version I will probably get if this, when this comes out, I'll probably maybe get a 3DS version since 3DS seems a portable since side-scrolling platformers seem to do work well for platformers. Again, they put tits in and I'll get it, but it's not. <laughs> Have you guys ever I been fans of the doubt. Mega I sincerely mm-hmm. doubt, Bill, that there will be tits in Mega Man. Then I have no interest. Um, no, I've, I've never really been into it. I had a, mm-hmm. um, when I was a kid, I remember my aunt, who uh, did not make a lot mm-hmm. of money for a Christmas uh-huh. present, got me a, uh, I don't know what the fuck it was. It was a Mega Man toy that was red. It was probably and, man. Uh, I don't know what it was, and I used to, I played with it all the time. It was actually a cool toy, but um, I never got into uh, yeah. it. Um, but that was that that was my deepest connection. I remember to Mega looking man. at Mega Man as a child and thinking he looks like a poor man's RoboCop. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna go watch RoboCop. Dead or alive, Wiley, <laughs> Doctor Wiley, you're coming with me. And Dylan and I went off singing the RoboCop. Dun 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 dun. dun, dun, dun. Uh, uh, you know, it's funny. Like uh, recently, there's this guy on YouTube called Brental Floss who makes these really awesome um, songs where he takes video game tunes and gives them lyrics. Uh, I've been singing a lot of his Mega Man ones. I am Mega oh, yeah. Man. I've got a motherfucking gun for a hand. <laughs> bright or light if you're American. I eat all my mega brand. I live in 2D and it's my duty to destroy the master bots. Pow pow, if you're a gas and can't last, there's a fast way to pass all those bastard bots. Blue and red password dots. <laughs> and the Autobots <laughs> make their battle to destroy the evil forces of the Decepticons. You know, you know what I have to say to oh. Mega Man? Mega Man. You got the touch. Come on. Hey, Mega, Mega, Mega Man. Come on. Mega Man, you got the touch. Mega Man, you got the touch, man. You got the touch. Da, da, da. You're making Mega that Man. That was an awesome voice by the guy that did Grimm on the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. <laughs> I am Mega Man, Martin. That's cool. I'm going to, I'm going to use my Mega Man gone, man. <laughs> he's, he's a pot smoker. Oh, that's some good shit, man. I got the Mega Gonjo over here. Here's a, here's a beanie, sunglasses, dreads. And, and, like, each of the bosses, they have man at the end, like, like, um, like, uh, fire. I, I like the Yeah, he's called, yeah, he's called, um, what's called, uh, Stashmon. <laughs> Stashmon. <laughs> yeah, I'm a Mega Man. I'm gonna show my Mega Man right up your ass, man. What the fuck did he just say? No, no. You're talking about me behind the back, Do Jamaican Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I am the Batman, man. I'm going to fight the Joker, man. Alfred, man, get me a sandwich, Where man. Where are the other drugs going, man? <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, where are the other drugs going? The city just shows you, man, that is full <laughs> of people, man, willing to believe in good, man. <laughs> You're the symbol I could never be, You were Jamaican, and you were in our audience. I am sincerely sorry. (laughs) I'm really sorry. Wow, that was... I mean, when I made the pot joke and the dread joke, I was being very stereotypical. They got a barbsled seat. The the views of Sassy Bar (laughs) do not reflect those of the rest of the Sons of Sarazawa. We at the Sons of Sarazawa do not exclude... uh, Do not single out certain minorities and races. We go after everyone. <laughs> no one is safe. We go after okay. people. <laughs> <laughs> not even the poor are safe. Actually, especially not the poor. So get ready, poor people. You're next. <laughs> Luckily, they're too poor to own an internet connection. <laughs> no, this is just like some poor guy watching <laughs> some kid in an internet cafe watching this this podcast, and he's just like, God damn it. He starts to waddle away. He turns around. It's just us with a fucking cricket bat. Just like, so, are you poor? He's just like, no. <laughs> Wait, a cricket uh, bat? Do we give him? The, do we give him the speech that Casey Jones gives to those thugs with the cricket bat? Uh, Jose Canseco bat. Tell me, 
You did not pay money for this. Jose Consigo time! I didn't even need dinosaur power, now! It was a reference to a <laughs> video made by the guys who did the Juggernaut video, where the Red Ranger kept going, I'm Jose Conseco! Wait. Jose! Power <laughs> Sombrero! <laughs> <To make Okay. laughs> Moosla needs to fight Jose and his Power Sombrero. <laughs> and his Megazord is the Tequila Gundam. Um, yes! <laughs> <laughs> my god, is that, oh is my that god. mecha so racist looking? <laughs> and his combining form is the Dos Equis Man. <laughs> Seriously, if you look at a picture of the Tequila Gundam, not only is it dirt brown, it has a sombrero, cactus armor, and a mustache, and like a like like some like Pancho Villa, the Pancho Villa Sanchez. That's like some yeah. Michael Bay Transformer. Oh God, Bill, Bill, I have to sh I have to show you this. It will it will change your life. I doubt it, but okay. <laughs> Andres, yeah. in the meantime, so on to the next on. one. How, how much? How much? How many more uh, do you have to go? Let's see. Let's see. 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 Uh, three. But they're the two of them are really short. We can like knock them out. Okay, knock them out. Okay. Knock them out. So here, uh, in an interview with Samuel L. Jackson, he recently revealed that Elizabeth Olsen will be playing the Scarlet Witch in the uh, sequel Avengers: Age of Ultron. So not only is she is go not only is she going to lose her entire family to Godzilla, she is also going to be the daughter of a terrorist. Indeed. Yeah. But, uh, Poor bitch. I haven't personally oh. seen her in any movies, although the the movies which she has been in have been getting a lot of critical pr um, praise, and so she's really starting mm. um, to become like this. Uh, uh, I guess you can call it new blood. I guess like this like up and coming star, which is more way more yeah. than you can say for her uh, sisters. Yeah, well, I mean, to be fair to them, they get a lot of shit. They're honestly pretty smart with how they handle their careers post, uh, post the whole, whole you know. Uh, whole yeah, I mean, they're they're not trying, they're not the Kardashians, they're not trying to get a reality show, they're just, they just have run a fashion institute, which I don't know, I think that's pretty yeah, commendable. Yeah, that's true. Any, uh... I don't know. At least they're not the Kardashians. That's all. You can say that about any celebrity. At least they're not the Kardashians. Yeah. Now, would you now would you like to see Mary Kate, Mary Kate, Ashley, Mary Kate and Ashley appear as the Shobajins for the gods for the Godzilla reboots? Oh my <laughs> god! If we can somehow shrink them back to their full house form. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh my and god! They, like, they, it's like they, that. And they can say like the why they, And the reason why they they look so much like Elizabeth Olsen is because they're a projection of her psyche or something. Mothra, everywhere <laughs> you know, they, they don't even sing the the uh, the the good Mothra song. They sing the one from Ghidra where the American lyrics are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, uh, my mom hates the Mothra song. The good one, because you know I used to watch Godzilla yeah. movies all the time, so of course you'd hear it, and she used to hate my, it. You know my mom does not like the fairies and their song either. <laughs> Dude, what the fuck is it with Mother's hatred for the Twin Fairies and Dylan? I'm looking at that picture. That is yes. amazing. You know, at, that is so at, racist. As, as now, can't you, oh, can't and the you fact imagine, that is the pilot you imagine himself. That being, can't you imagine that being the Megazord for Jose Power Sombrero? <laughs> <laughs> the science is sound. The science is sound. You know, what's funny is that his, you guys probably won't get the joke, but his, the pilot's name is Chico Rodriguez. Chico is the name, the a, sl a slang term we use to describe little kids. Chico means little boy. Wait, isn't that hermano? No, uh, her hermano means brother. Oh wait, what is it? Uh, Nino. Nino. Yeah, Nino. Nino is um, yeah, Nino <laughs> is boy, but Chico is like a little like a slang term. There's Chico, and I only know that because of that scene from The Mask of Zorro where um, uh, Alejandro just throws his cane and is like Nino. <laughs> And then he does this amazing yeah. dance. I, huh. By the way, Mask of Zorro? Great I only remember that because it's one of the few things that I remember from my three years of Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> I took I took Spanish for four years, so I'm slightly more embarrassed you than know, you. You know, it's even more embarrassing. That's probably about the same amount of cl uh, time I took with my Spanish classes because, I, like, despite, like, despite the fact that I live, like, uh, five minutes from the uh, from the border, <laughs> um, and the fact that like everyone surrounded by Mexicans and I myself is Mexican, I never bothered learning Spanish at home. I had to learn it formally 
in um, yeah in in school. And because it's like a formal way of Spanish as opposed to like the informal way that everyone else speaks here, I was it's kind of hard to practice. I was like, uh, um, go, uh, I, I no, yo no quiero va ahí porque yo soy perezoso. Perezoso? What? Yeah. Wait, you said formal, I formal want formal Spanish is weird, man. Yeah, it's fucked up. I, uh, I don't. Yeah, Andres, Andres, you don't. You're, you don't. Um, do your parents speak Spanish? Oh, at home, oh of course, or they, they speak. speak fl- they speak fluent Spanish, but they. But do they speak it regularly? Yeah, yeah, they speak Spanish regularly. I just choose not to listen. And <laughs> you see, I. What a wonderful! What a what a what a star star amongst their womb are you? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you guys! I'm gonna speak the American like, language. I can't even begin to tell time in Spanish because after a certain point, it gets really weird. Where they like, it's like, oh it, my like, God. like four thirty is cuatro, cuatro y me- yeah, cuatro y media is four thirty. Yeah, but but then when and you like, get yeah. past that, it's like they say five minus however many minutes. It's or, or it's like, weird. You also don't say I am. I'm seventeen. You say I own seventeen years. Yeah, of time. Yo, yo, yeah, yeah. Yo tengo um, 27 años. I have 17 years. Yeah, it's weird. It's like it's almost like you own 17 years, and you're just like, I did not own the 18 years. Hey, man, that I don't work too hard for those 17. <laughs> I, I, I grew up in high school. I worked really hard for those years. I was like breathing and eating and shit. <laughs> <laughs> I kept myself alive. Not in good shape, but I kept myself alive. <laughs> Which is more than what you can say for mo- for most others. I mean, depending on what your definitions of the word living is, uh, <laughs> against the word surviving. Um, I mean, yes, I've lost two limbs and I am on the brink of death from a terminal disease, but that's besides the point. <laughs> so are we ready to move on? Those 17 years are still mine, government! <laughs> So, yeah, um, next story. Anyway, so Andre, next story. Next story. So it's um, Disney recently announced that they're going to have their first Marvel uh, Marvel related attraction at one of their Disneyland parks, which will be an Iron Man ride in Hong Kong. Oh, that's so useful oh. to me. Um. Yeah. <laughs> Because I frequent Hong Kong. Yeah, so I'm, long. I'm, I'm like I'm like really like trying to figure out how I can get to G Fest, but Hong Kong, that's no problem. <laughs> Yeah, it'll be called the Iron Man. And by saying that, and, and when Dylan says that, he's like, I don't trust this kid behind the wheel of a car. <laughs> like, I'll just go get in my Star Trek style transporter and go on over to Hong Kong. <laughs> I just hope a fly doesn't get in there with me. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh my god! So I just sent you a link to um, the article where it shows several concept arts of the uh, of the oh, ride. Right. It's called the Iron Man. The Iron Man Experience. <laughs> a bunch of pictures of dicks. <laughs> so yeah, it's called the Iron Man Experience. It'll open in 2016 at Hong Kong Disneyland. And, you know, a part of me just feels like raging and anger due to the fact that it's Iron Man, yet they're, Hong China gets to have it first and not us. Okay, Iron Man's a, tra- a traitor. For concept art, this is a picture of Iron Man flying through the sky, shooting at things. I don't think I would be doing this even if I was going to the ride in Hong Kong. No, no, Dylan, you see that car in the background? Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's, that's what you'll be doing. <laughs> it seems to be, it, I, I, I have a feeling that it's going to be similar to Star, Star Tour, the Star Tours ride at Disneyland, where it's like, or the back... So in other words, it is not going to be nearly this cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. I mean, Star Tours and b- both Star Tours and the Back to the Future ride are pretty awesome. I don't know, Bill. If they can build mm. giant alien death machines, it ought to be a. It ought to work just fine. <laughs> once we, once we, once we achieve that small feat, we'll be able to. Hey man, I don't understand Iron why Man. we don't have those robots from Avatar because we have Wii technology, and we have robotics technology. Just put a... Put those things together, science. What's taking you so long? It science. Not be oh, speaking of science, have you have you seen that new Samsung commercial for that? Up- phone uh watch phone where it's like it goes yes. through the, yeah yeah it goes through, it's a really cool commercial i know i love that commercial like it goes through the history of fictional risk communicators like star trek it power predator rangers it Tracy. has the predator one and that really appeals to me because i've been going through a predator phase and now i just hope that this watch has a uh, self-destruct feature <laughs> <laughs> and no one's just gonna be laughing like whoa, 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 whoa. and i'm just be like fuck somebody <laughs> defeats me i'll just feel like what the hell are you and then blow myself up 
<laughs> and um, I really hope that you can add like a- I love that line in Predator. It's such a good way to end that movie. And I'll run around mm-hmm. asking kids, and then I'll run around in the sequel asking kids if they want some candy. That's not what he asks. We talked about this. That's not no, what happened. But that's the way I choose to remember it. <laughs> and in the cemetery, just running up to little kids. Dylan and I had like a five minute argument about how that scene plays I'm, out. And he seems to think that the pet the predator is a oh, pederast. The kid says want some candy that's, and the predator just repeats it. I know. That's that's, that's the extent of it. <laughs> But Dylan is like, no, the word predator is going to take on a whole listen, new meaning. Listen, when you when your name, because they never give the predator in that movie a name like they do in some of the later movies, so I just have to so I just have to go by what Danny Glover called him. When your name is Pussyface, <laughs> all bets are off. As as all the other predators, all bets be. are off. <laughs> True. Well. I have always wanted to see a parody of To Catch a Predator with an actual <laughs> predator. Yeah, they could have done it. They could have done it in Robot Chicken, and it would have been amazing because there's this great sketch where there's this guy in the shower, and he's like, "Is somebody there?" And then you just see a predator materialize and run out. <laughs> <laughs> reminds me of yeah, it reminds me of this one thing done on the uh, the Boondocks where it's like To Catch a Predator, but the predator ends up raping uh, Chris Hansen. Oh my <laughs> like, God! Now I like you, and I want you. Now, we aren't going to do this either the easy way or the hard way. It doesn't matter to me. The choice is yours. I now will not be sleeping tonight. Thank you, Andreas. <laughs> I'm, I'm a warrior. <laughs> and we've seen some shit on this show. We introduced <laughs> some of the fans to the Little Baby's Ice Cream commercial. <laughs> and had some planning in the comments about it. I love that yeah. comment. He's like, Damn, I love that you comment. Sons so of <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. anyway, Andres, how many more stories? More, do you have? I'm sure you're gonna love this one. Okay. Okay. Did they did did they find? Um, never okay. mind. Go ahead. So, um, <laughs> fountain of youth, and you have to pay fifteen dollars. <laughs> Free healthcare for everyone because of it. Oh. Another. Uh, and then they're what? gonna shut down the Fountain of Youth because it'll be considered a national park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just got all political in this. And shit. Adam isn't even here. I know. Okay. We should have turned this into a political debate because he's not here. <laughs> he's probably gonna listen to this, and we should have like been completely wrong about this. Like we just make make up facts. Obviously. Uh, Ron Did Paul. you know? Did you know that in 1776, um, FDR <laughs> FDR fought zombies in the Great War of 1776, and, great... and his best and his and his number one ally was Optimus and Prime. And the vampires teamed up. FDR had this great crossover with Abe Lincoln. <laughs> it was like Mar- it was like Marvel team up but with presidents. So anyways, this for this story, um let's see. So uh, I'm on the I'm on the edge of my Neil Mar- really confused. <laughs> Neil Marshall, the uh director of Dog Soldiers and the Descent is planning on adapting the uh novel Kong King of Skull Island. Fuck yes. Wait, uh, this is this Called is the it. guy that makes that made dog soldiers. Never heard yes. of it until now. Yep. So I, I uh, You've never heard you've never seen Oh, dog well now soldiers? I know that you haven't watched me and Adam's review of Bill's movie. <laughs> because it turned into a review of dog soldiers. <laughs> um, so yeah, like apparently even the um back way back in the day, uh, Marion C. Cooper, he was he was unable to have the full um copy um the full license to the character of King Kong that because that belonged to he the character belonged to RKO. However, he had, I believe, the novelization rights to King Kong. So that's how the uh, the illustrated uh, novel like or comic book, Kong King of Skull Island was developed in It's not really a comic, it's a lot more of a adult picture book. God is all Ooh, I can think of it. Um, yes. It's got them pictures and them words just to comic boy. When you say when you okay. Say adult. Is this where the idea for his redheaded wife came from? Yes. <laughs> um, 
Um, it's uh, it's really good. If you guys haven't read it, pick it up. It's a good. Yeah, I definitely, I've, I've definitely read it, and it's very interesting that it's a, it's like a sequel and a prequel at the same time, where it's said twenty five years after the events of King Kong. Um, Jack Driscoll he um, returns to Skull Island and learns more about the history of Kong and the natives. Well, oh, well, Har- Harlan, Harlan Denim just... and Jack Dris- Driscoll, and then eventually Carl Denham's son um, ends up becoming a part of the uh, of the journey that, uh, as he becomes the main character. Well, no, Carl Denham's dead. No, I mean Carl Denham's son. Yeah, that's yes. what I meant to say. Vince, yeah. Oh, I thought I thought you said Carl Denham. I'm like Carl Denham Wait, was Carl dead. Denham <laughs> is dead. He has to have those adventures with that little white gorilla. <laughs> no, they, they, uh, Son of Kong is not in that. Unfortunately. <laughs> you know what's funny? Like, do you guys ever remember seeing, there was this, like, April Fool's gag where Peter Jackson talked, yep. yeah, talked about making Son of Kong and making a King Kong 3 movie where he would end up having... Kong into the lion's yeah, den. where he would have, like, the, the Son of Kong end up fight, help, becoming part of the war against the Nazis with, like, Gatling guns. Schultz. Fuck Peter Jackson for getting my hopes up because that sounds it like, sounds like the greatest movie ever made. <laughs> it does, and it never happened because it was a. It never happened because all the, Peter they had Jackson all the doesn't actors. make things that are that outrageous. Quentin Tarantino needs to make this. Yeah, Quentin Tarantino's hey. King Kong into the line. I've obviously dead. never seen De- Peter Jackson's Dead Alive. Now that was crazy as hell. No, Peter Jackson would totally make yeah. that movie. Yeah, uh, it's I, I love how like with with that April Fool's gag, they had all the actors like in, in these fake interviews, and even had like these CGI um, son of Kong. They had a fake maquette for God's yeah. sake. They had a fake maquette. It's why? Crazy. I mean, yeah. seriously, why not remake? Oh, okay, they probably never made a son of Kong remake because King Kong didn't really do so well financially. I mean, it was it barely made back its money, I believe. Like it, or maybe, really? no, no, maybe that wasn't the case. Maybe it was the fact that it wasn't a big mega hit like Universal was planning it to be. No, they didn't make a sequel because that'd be fucking stupid. Because <laughs> King Kong just, doesn't really need a sequel, and it's the only version that doesn't have one. Um, why it's also, Peter Jackson only signed even on though for King one Kong movie. Escapes, yeah, I mean, even though King Kong Escapes isn't technically a sequel to King Kong vs. Godzilla, everybody considers it to be one. <laughs> no, to- no you're, you're, it's the complete opposite. Toho thinks it's a sequel. Everyone else is like, fuck you, it's not a sequel. Kong is drastically smaller, and it's on the wrong island. In his face. And everyone... And, and, <laughs> yeah. and everyone doesn't... Everyone goes back to not knowing who or what Kong is. That is my biggest pro. See, did you guys see my Whatever Happened to the Eighth yeah. Wonder video? Yes. I... I the, the biggest point I make in that video is... Stop doing movies where people don't know who Kong is. Right. It's annoying. And what is one of the things I said in that I said in that video? We should make a movie out of Kong, King of Skull Island. And guess what they're doing? I was so thrilled. And it was like it was so weird because it was the same week I put out that oh. video. I was so, I was so fucking um, happy. Oh, so yeah, it's weird. It's, it's, it's kind of yeah. the same story that ever, or the same problem that everybody has with superhero movies. It's like we don't need an origin story every time. We exactly. don't need it. Well, I mean, also, it's like, now King Kong has been remade properly. Everyone, there is no reason everyone to Everyone do... knows who Batman is, and everyone knows who King Kong is. Right. Well, here's the thing. You don't need to remake Kong for at least 20 years. Now we need to remake Beast from 20,000 Fathoms. <laughs> yes! Well, that happened already. It was called Technically, Godzilla. that should have um, happened after Kong 05, but before Legendary's Godzilla. <laughs> And yet, instead, uh, we get Mighty yeah. Joe Young remake. Oh, you mean the one from yeah. the nineties? That was a like decent. Yeah, you know, to be honest, I it's been years since I've seen it. I know I have it on VHS, but yeah, I do remember owning. I do remember enjoying it as a kid. It's not good, but it's not terrible. I enjoyed um, that. I, I enjoyed that movie. I forgot. I enjoyed was, it as well. Was but Mighty Joe Young portrayed with a uh, suit. Especially as a as, no, as, or was it? Especially as a child, but I, I doubt. I doubt that it holds up. Um, Eh, you know, um, it's, uh, it doesn't, it's a, we, it's a mix, it's animatronics, and I believe it's also Cinemation, there's no CG, um, but it's done really well, uh, yeah, and they also, it's also, uh, it's also an effective tribute mm-hmm. to the original film, because honestly, I don't really like the original, <laughs> <laughs> again, it's been a while I know, since I've seen I know. it, 
It's not really. I mean, it's marketed as a monster movie. It's not well, a monster that's movie. Me. No, um, I'm. I don't really care about the original. Mighty <laughs> too young either to tell you the truth. I mean, it's 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 amazingly well done special effects wise, but yeah, that was you know that, like Ray Harryhausen's um, first movie. Yeah, it's it's yes. great. And, and well, it was also a reunion. It was a reunion of all of the uh, the living King Kong uh, production mm. team. And they were like, uh, let's make a movie about a gorilla because no one's expecting <laughs> that. Well, also again, they didn't have the rights to Kong, so they had to do what they could. Uh, it's it's not a terrible movie. It's I mean, uh, fucking uh, um, Robert Armstrong is the guy who played Carl Denham. I think that sounds right. Yeah, Robert Armstrong plays one of the characters. Uh, it's it's a fun movie. I mean, it's an entertaining movie. The ending is awesome, but it's uh, it's a little boring at points. Um. Also, the scene where Joe breaks out of the bar is also really cool because there's a fight scene with lions and shit, which mm-hmm. is cool, and they do it really well. Uh, going, it's a decent movie. Okay, uh, going back to the uh, Kong King of Skull Island, they they made this uh, in the uh, for Kong's origin, they introduced this um, dinosaur. I forgot what its name, but Gaw. What? Gaw. 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 Yeah. Gaw. Gaw. G A W G A W Because that's all because that's all you'll get to say before he kills you. I can't believe they had the gall to name it Gaw. Oh Dylan Dylan go in the I, corner. I, I am in the corner. I, I, okay. I, I went there. I, 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 there I, I, I'm actually kinda in the corner of my room right now, because that's where my desk is. Uh, well my question was like well, not a question, but the one the kind I thought it was kinda the design it's of God itself was kind of weird because he had is the a, a, basically a T Rex with human proportioned arms. Do they show him in the book? Because they describe him intricately. But I'm trying to remember I'm I'm looking through the book right now to Obviously see if they show he's him. he's a cross between a T Rex and a Stegosaurus. No. Um <laughs> Oh obviously. <laughs> I'm... Um, hang on, I'm flipping through the book, looking for God. I see Matt Frank's depiction of God. I'm a looking for God. I'm a looking for God. Love the, the sense of Sarah's... Uh, he yeah, I mean it's um, it's basically a T-Rex with fins on it, with he- human hands. Yeah, I thought it was kind of. Uh, and I know what everyone is thinking right now, and no, it's not Godzilla. Yeah, it seems um, kind of weird. I was, I was I kind know, of thinking Gorgo. <laughs> oh, no, you see, Gorgo, he has these freakishly large boxing glove-sized hands. Such hmm. an asset. Also, this, interestingly enough, this is the thing that the Skull Islanders worshipped before mm-hmm. Kong. Now, that'd be kind of interesting to see how, you know, how they would bring uh, God back to, uh, how they bring God to life, and how they would... If they're going to use like some sort of like uh, motion capture thing, since he has those like human proportioned limbs, you have an you have an alternate uh, history where he defeated King Kong and then Carl Denham took him to New York and called him King Gaw. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, also the interesting thing about the book is that Kong is not the name of the creature; it's the name of the species, and the only reason why he's called King Kong is because he's the last mm-hmm. one. And the book goes into the actual. Actual King Kong's origin. Mm, yeah, yeah. Like they had him and his mother, I believe. He basically has the same origin as Batman. <laughs> <laughs> My parents are dead. Brah, break your neck. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Ooh. That's pretty much yeah, Kong's Frank origin. Grew and it looks pretty cool. Of course, it yeah. looks good. It's Matt Frank. It's Matt anyway, Frank, man. everyone do everyone do yourself a favor and read Kong King of Skull Island. It is a really Really fun tribute to the original King Kong, a great expansion on the original source material, and a wonderful, wonderful read. So go ahead and pick that up. What the hell of that? (laughs) Have you ever heard of something called Kongzilla? No. What? Kongzilla. I think you mean Gorizard. No. (laughs) (laughs) No. There's a uh, a character... In, uh, there's a character in, uh, what was it, Speed Buggy? Speed Buggy, named Kingzilla, who is a parody of King Kong, but that's all, that's all I'm, I'm thinking of here. Oh, 
I'm gonna look oh, this Eric, up I'm, now. I, I'm looking at a Matt Frank um, picture of of this supposed Kongzilla. Is that what, what you're referring? What to? the fuck? That's weird. All right, everyone. What we're looking at here is a hybrid of King Kong and Godzilla, and it's kind of cool. It's bizarre. Kind of looks like a cross between Godzilla and the Hulk. It looks like uh, it looks like um, Fing Fang Foom from Marvel. Ooh, good reference. Yeah, except yeah, he need, except he needs his pur- except he needs his purple shorts for, in order in order yes. in order to truly <laughs> be Fing Fang Foom. And it needs to be summoned by the Mandarin going, Fing Fang Foom! So pissed that wasn't in Iron Man 3. <laughs> I, I know, to, right? I, was, I, I, had no, I, had no, I, I had no problem with that. I wanted some... I have a major I wanted Iron Man 3 to have some awesome Fing Fang Foom action. <laughs> um, Maybe we will for Avengers No, I, I just... 3. Well, they have, the, they have a decent... Fing Fang, Fing Fang Foom reference. They have, they have a tattooed on his arm, so that's you know what, decent. But it's you know what, doesn't turn out to be the real Mandarin, so it doesn't mean spoiler shit. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Thankfully, oh, I'm sure everybody knows by this point. <laughs> Thankfully, Trevor, the drugged out British actor, has a has a tattoo of uh, Fing Fang Foom. <laughs> that just makes everything better. You know what? I I have only, I've only recently gotten over that and was able to watch Iron Man three with that knowledge. It's it's a decent. I movie. love it. I like but that's, that's I okay. it's it's okay. I like the ending credit sequence. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, on Trace, is there any other news? Uh, no, but I just wanted to bring this up. In, um, on Nickelodeon, there was a, uh, I think a, a, it was a short-lived series called Iron Man Armored Adventures, and it was like a... Oh. Yeah. And in that, they had Fing Fang Foom, and he had the American Godzilla's roar. He had Zilla's roar. Yeah, a lot of Nick- Nickelodeon used the American Godzilla's roar a lot. They used it a lot in Danny Phantom and uh, Fairly Odd Parents. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like a five. There is also, mm-hmm. oddly enough, a moment in Doctor Who when they use that roar. Mm-hmm. Oh, you want us? Uh... Dylan, I don't. Mm-hmm. Dylan, I don't know if you remember this, but there, remember the uh, the God Complex. Yes. Where they're going through the hallway, and uh, it's actually not what you think it is. It's not the monster. There's this scene where the doctor is looking down a hallway, and all shining like it starts to extend. And when it starts to extend, you hear a very faint roar, and it sounds like, Aah! and I'm like, holy shit, was that Zilla's roar? Yeah, yeah, that was bizarre. It was weird. I'm like, what the fuck? And another bit of trivia where the Godzilla roar has appeared somewhere else is that. For those fan for fans of seventies uh, Japanese super robot shows, there's a show called uh, Gai King, and in Gai King there's a giant me- um, robot dragon, and and the robot dragon had Godzilla's roar. And the, in the show, the good guys would fight robot monsters, and one of the robot monsters was a uh, was a a pterodactyl that had Rodan's roar. There was also a the first trailer for Spider Man three had Godzilla's roar over the Sandman, and it was fucking weird. There's an episode <laughs> of Star Trek, the animated series, where Spock goes back in time and meets himself as a boy. But his, himself as a boy goes out into the desert, and him and his pet cat thing get attacked. And furiously jerks yeah, off. Wait, no, what? <laughs> um, he gets attacked by this big green Vulcan monster, and it has the Godzilla roar. Yeah. Oh, really? That's cool. Where was... Toho when all when all these um these events happened. Yeah, they're suing beer companies for fucking using Zilla as a tagline. I find it I, and they're not suing these motherfuckers for using their actual I find it form. hilarious that Star Trek the Anime had the Godzilla roar, but Hanna Barbera's Godzilla had a drunken <laughs> popo. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to get no, it didn't even sound that good, Andre. So it was like, you know how much better that show would be if somebody would fan edit it and give it the right roar. <laughs> it actually that actually doesn't have to be done. The Toho produced version have the Does classic it? roar. Good. Yeah, I'm gonna get my I'm gonna get my hands on the Japanese version and watch it because I think I'll like it more. Um, and something on my channel involving that show will be coming out very oh, soon. Oh snap! Evil grin. Anyway, I will not plug that now because it's it's slowly, slowly coming. So, any much like my sex life. Anyway, um, you said it, not, you said it, not me. That escalated quickly. Uh, anyway, uh, so guys, 
Do you guys have anything else to say before yes, we wrap up? Yes, I actually have news. Kaiju oh. fans that read the book Project Nemesis will be happy to know that they have already announced the sequel, Project Mygo, which I don't know when it's coming out, but um, Matt Frank has already revealed the uh, the cover art over on um, Facebook and on uh, DeviantArt. So. Imagine if we got him as a guest, how awesome that I would know. be. Mm-hmm. Oh, imagine imagine that were cool. to happen at our G-Fest episode, if it ever if it ever comes to light. No, I think it's going to happen. Me and Dylan seem pretty set on it, and uh, we'll see about the rest of the guys, including you. <laughs> the rest of um, the guys were talking to him in, in third person. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens with Andres. He's like, I'm right here. <laughs> Fuck you. Um, yeah, I'm, anyway, I, uh, you know I this, have... Andres kid? He, uh... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we... Uh, we... We worry about him. Oh, sometimes. right. I mean, uh, seriously, that guy has just had a. Can you believe his ego, man? I mean, he just thinks that he's so much better than the rest of us. And you know what I heard? I heard he fucked a dog. My God, that guy's sick in the head. And you know what I hear? <laughs> I hear he likes to talk shit about himself quite often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's kind of like that Bill kid and that Dylan kid. <laughs> I know, right? This just got this just got fucking meta. Anyway, oh, you know, I have you know me and meta. <laughs> anyway, I have an announcement before we wrap up. On um, the next episode of the Sons of Sarazal podcast will be the weekend before Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Captain Ginyu. I didn't know you Insert were Insert spooky um, sound here. <laughs> Ooh, no. Um, before Halloween, the weekend of the Sons of Sarazal podcast. We will be doing a Halloween extravaganza. We will have games, trivia. We will have entirely Halloween-based conversations. Andres will do an entire monster-oriented news segment. I'll there try. Will be, <laughs> which, I am, which I am now just putting on There will be more him. games for me to lose. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, the entire cast will be oh, here. Probably. Maybe. Um, hopefully. Most Maybe. Probably not. not. Um, <laughs> and we will do, we'll have lots of fun. We will take uh, Q&A questions live. We will not be doing the show live. But before we're about to record, we will do a Twitter and Facebook live Q&A. And you guys can ask us questions entirely Halloween related and we will answer them. We'll talk about Halloween costumes, Halloween movies, what we like to do on Halloween. Everything will be related to Halloween, and we will have a good old time. And we will anyway, get picked off one by so one I'm... by Jason Voorhees. <laughs> yes, indeed. Spoiler... No, by Musla. Um, Spoiler alert, we all get arrested by the end for teeping uh, our Dylan, uh, enemies' houses. Dylan, I was wondering, since you are the resident artist for the Sons of Sarasota podcast... I'm going to draw Musla with the Jason Voorhees mask on. <laughs> Um, you have the right idea. Could you do a Halloween-oriented title card? Could I? Maybe. Will you? <laughs> Incorporating Musa. Yeah, I was about to ask if you just wanted to use the Angry Bird thing. So my <laughs> the Angry Bird no, thing. No, 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 no. I'm thinking of doing a sequel to that one for this year and dress them all up as slasher villains. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Um, but we'll see if Dylan will be able to do that for us. Uh... Andres, I'll go over more details with you on the monster news thing after we uh, get out of here. Um, and obviously, I'll convert. Yeah. And we will. Uh, we, uh, we will. We will test. Uh, we will test the new uh, fruit brood and y- fruity yummy mummy <laughs> cereals. Right as we record. <laughs> um, no. I I can promise you that we will not be doing <laughs> I, that. I've seen the fruity yummy mummy out in town, but I can't find fruit brood anywhere, man. <laughs> I just my my parents <laughs> my parents just found all the cereals except for Yummy Mummy, and they really? were almost out. Oh, yeah. What about Blueberry? Oh no! Like I said, they, my parents found all of them except for Fruity Yummy Mummy, yep, and then have, all, yeah, all, all the those, those cereals problem. are selling out find, fast. I've got the other problem. I can't find Fruit Brood anywhere. I've been searching, man. I've been searching. Oh. Wait, what's Fruit the Brood? The werewolf. The one. werewolf. Oh really? That's stupid. Um, I, do you don't you remember me recording this in like the second or third episode? I don't remember. <laughs> I don't keep memories. Yes, Andre, um, because we remember every news broadcast that you've ever done, even though we never actually talk about the story that you're talking about. <laughs> we always just make fun of it. 
<laughs> um, anyway, so guys, I think that's going to about do it for this episode of the Sons of Sarazal podcast. Again, sorry, no Adam or David. They will hopefully be back next time for our Halloween extravaganza. I'm kind of sort of planning a Halloween anyway. thing for Kaiju Spotlight, so that might that might happen. Mm. <laughs> mm, it's going to be a spooky-filled month here at the Sons of Sarazala. Anyway, so until next time, I'm Zazubar, a.k.a. Bill Worst. I am SuperDM64. And I'm Andres Perez, a.k.a. Kaiju Noir, reminding you to support your local comic book store... Please remember to get your dogs and cats spayed and neutered. <laughs> also, please remember, don't dump nuclear waste in the ocean, for it will produce giant Watch monsters. out for asshole rats. Um, Indeed. Until next time, guys, the science is Both, both ways before crossing the street. Uh, <laughs> <laughs>